Hi, I'm Dino Tripodis. Tonight on the podcast, one of our most popular and most insane, crazy guests that we've ever had, the world's most superstitious Buckeye fan, is back, but not as a Buckeye fan. This time around, he's a senator. How? We'll find out tonight on Whiskey Business. Hi, I'm Dino Tripodis, and welcome to Whiskey Business, the podcast not so much about whiskey as it is one with whiskey. I remember a conversation, I was probably about 11 or 12 years old with my mom, (laughs) and uh, she said to me, she goes, what do you you want to be when you grow up? And I said, Mom, I'm not really sure. She goes, well, you know, honey, you can be whatever you want to be if you put your mind to it. And I said to her, Wow. So I could be I could be a police officer and she said, "Uh no. Um your father's side of the family has a very strong criminal background and you probably wouldn't pass the background check." Yeah. I said, "Oh, okay." I said, "Well, could I be could I be famous like a famous actor?" And she went, you know, and remember, I was 11, 12 years old. She says, you know, Telly Savalas is already famous, and he's Greek, and I don't think they allow more than one Greek to be famous. <laughs> That's, at, true. A, That's true. At a time. <laughs> and then I said, could I be president of the United States? And she went, y- your two uncles on your father's sides were card-carrying communists, and they probably <laughs> wouldn't be able, back in the 40s and the 50s, mind you, but she probably wouldn't be able to get past that as well. And I said, so what can I be? And she said, honey, you can be whatever you you want to be (laughs) when it's all said and done. My point being, you never know how life is going to take an interesting (laughs) turn. You know somebody, you love somebody, he's one of your favorite people in the world, and you count on him to be a certain type of individual for as long as you've known him. And I'm talking about our friend, Bill DeMora, the world's most superstitious Buckeye fan in the world. Yeah. He's been on repeated mm-hmm. podcasts. I think, he, someone mentioned it to me the other day, I, he goes, is there a record for amount of guest appearances on Whiskey Business? Billy DeMora would have to be. He's like yeah. four or five, five. More than that, I think. And when you count well, uh, it, yeah, every, it, Pretty much every year, every uh, football something, season. Every football season. And, and those podcasts have ranged from, well, they've started at Lunacy and have just escalated up to then. Those but, some of the funnest ones. But yeah. fun. But that's tonight, a, the first episode I ever heard was one with him, and that's what drew me in. Right. I was like, oh, wow, yeah. this is yeah, yeah. crazy. This guy's nuts. This guy's this nuts. Is awesome. <laughs> that was a great, that's the great podcast. And I don't care what your political views are. I don't care what side of the spectrum you are on in respects to politics. Uh, we know that that game is a very crazy one. And I am convinced now that it has to be because when Billy sits down with us tonight, we will be calling him the Honorable mm-hmm. Senator William P. DeMora. He has Woo-hoo. been elected senator, a senator in the great state of Ohio. So when Billy sits down tonight, the questions are going to be probably the same. <laughs> Before it's all said and done. But... We'll be talking to him and find out what this journey has been, how it started, how it happened, and the fact that he is still uh, one of the most uh, affluent bourbon, rye, whiskey lovers that I know. He has brought one, two, three, four, five, six bottles with him. Looks like five. Five bottles with him. And on top of that, we also have, um, and, and I hope we don't ruffle any feathers, but right here in my hands is an advanced bottle of the watershed, the coveted rye whiskey that they've been sitting on, mm. uh, the six-year-old rye, which is being released mm. on the February Can't wait 25th. To taste it. There's a lottery going on as we speak, and because of our our relationship with Watershed, they were kind enough to bring this to us. We're gonna we're gonna try this tonight as well. We're not gonna kill the bottle tonight. <laughs> no, okay, no. no, no, no. no. We're just going to taste it. Aww. We're going to taste Tell it. Tell people how to think about it. find out uh, a little bit about it. I 
I will confess that but I wanna. <laughs> behind closed doors when this was sitting in a barrel at Watershed, we did have the opportunity oh, yeah. when we were selecting our whiskey barrel, mm-hmm. our, our whiskey business barrel, right. which, mm-hmm. by the way, is one bottle away from being sold out. Ah. Nice. There were two bottles left when I went down there, and I picked up one. <laughs> And mm. there's one left, and I'm assuming now that it's gone. But well done, gentlemen. Did they charge you full price? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I, yeah. I, and I was happy to pay it, to be honest with you. Uh, I think that's great. I think that's great that the uh, that our barrel selection uh, sold out. It sold you know? out. Yeah, it's nice. You know, we made jokes about the fact that, you know, oh, it's just going to sit there. Yeah. But they put it on their flight menu in the, in the restaurant. So people it's, bought some. Yeah, so people bought some, and they liked it. And I've heard, I've seen a lot of comments on Instagram. So now uh, we have to do another one. About uh, mm. do another one or do something mm. with them. But uh, we have a, a very full slate of whiskey and conversation yes. oh, with man. Senator William P. DeMora. Yeah. And I've known him for 20 plus years, and I'm not even sure. I don't even know what the P stands for, to be honest with you. So <laughs> <laughs> I know what I'm thinking yeah. in my head. Right, 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 right. right. <laughs> we need to know. Peter, we'll, Paul. We'll, 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 find, we'll find out. So. Um, the business, right? Yeah, yeah. The business. Let's get to the business. Chip, do you know how to do the business? Uh, I, not really. Give it a, I'll give it a shot. Give it a shot. Hey, uh, hit like and subscribe and follow us on all your favorite social medias like YouTube and Instagram and Facebook. That's, that's pretty much not, it. That's, that's, yeah. that's not it, though, at all. Uh, is it? Well, you got some details. Uh, like yeah. YouTube, it's Whiskey Business with Dino Tripodis. That's yeah. right. Whiskey uh, Business with you, Dino Tripodis. If you smash that subscribe button, smash, smash. Uh, smash. You, you'll get updates. And if you hit that little ding bell button, ding. yeah, thank you. Uh, you'll get an update every time that uh, John posts a yeah. video. Um, whiskey Business is uh, at uh, uh, oh, whiskeybusinesspod.com. See, right. see, that's I, right, whiskeybusinesspod.com. And yet he still struggles yeah, with that's it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, thank you for subscribing on your favorite podcasting app. Also, we always appreciate it. Word of mouth. Uh, give this uh, episode or previous favorite episodes to your uh, fellow podcasting mm-hmm. whiskey-loving friends. Thank you to Evergreen. Those are our uh, parents. Our podcasting parents. Our podcasting parents. Yeah. They're kicking butt as well. Yeah. Evergreenpodcast.com. Our numbers yeah. are up, so keep our, going. Yeah, guys. our numbers are, are, are way up, which is great. It's just it's very, very That's nice. Awesome. And thank you, Evergreen is Podcast whiskey, Network. Is Whiskey Business on Twitter? Can you yeah, be we found have a Twitter, on Twitter, Twitter account. Kind yeah. of, sort of. I don't, you know, I don't gotcha. know. We have one. We have one. Can you be found on Grinder? <laughs> <laughs> no, Chip. No, we're not on, on Grinder. You're the only one here with an account. You check yeah. it out for us. Yeah. Okay. We're not on Grinder. Also, our, our I don't even know what to call our guest bottle tonight. Our guest bottles come from Billy, but this technically is, I guess, the star guest bottle for yeah. tonight. At least right at the top. Yeah. Right. And uh, we want to thank our buddy Jeff Gage, a realtor at Costigan. Gage, um, their team at Remax One. You can contact him at 614-638-8711. Or email him at jeffgage at remax.net. Jeff Gage, Ooh, our, yeah, buddy, Jeff. our buddy, is now sponsoring our guest bottle. And any minute now, I think, unless they forgot us, we should be getting some Gatto's Pizza. Oh, yeah. gotta get a Gatto's. Uh, gotta get a Gatto's. Our Gattos. official pizza sponsor yeah. of Whiskey Business. I'll keep an ear out for him. Keep an ear out for him. Okay, yeah. all right. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I want to go tour some houses with Jeff. Uh, I'm not buying any. I just want to hang out with him. Yeah. I bet he's, he, I bet he, he's, he's like a good hilarious. hair. He's a good, yeah. Yeah. he's a good guy. He's a good guy. He's a funny guy. <laughs> yeah. you know, he'll make the whole house buying process very, very humorous, but yeah. he's also very good at what he does. Yeah, he's real good. All right, so that takes care of all the business, right? Yep. Yeah. For the time being. And uh, Chip, yes. we're going to have to ask you to get up so we can officially welcome back to Whiskey Business, ladies and gentlemen, the Honorable Senator William P. DeMora. Whatever, whatever. whatever. Oh, please. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Thank you, Dino. You're welcome, Bill. I... I I'm thrilled for you. First of all, let me let me let me get some of the sincerity out of the way. <laughs> okay. Yes, please. Let's get it out. Uh, let, of the let way. me get some. Of the I don't sincerity. want to cry later on. In the uh, show. Let me get some of the sincerity out of the way because uh, I need you to explain how this all occurred and 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 how things aligned so that you could actually run for this position. But when you told me that you were doing it, I was thrilled because despite all the craziness, despite all the insanity and all the fun that we've had with you on this podcast as the world's most superstitious Buckeye fan, which I'm assuming you still are. Of course. Of course, but that's for another time. Have you seen what I'm wearing? I'm wearing? Yeah, I see, I see, I see you what good. you're wearing. Yeah. <laughs> and, and we might touch upon that a little bit 
uh, throughout the podcast. But but right now, when you told me that you were going to be running, <laughs> running <Phone> case. <laughs> for the, uh, the the open seat, I was thrilled because, um, and I say this sincerely, when it comes to this government politics, um, you're the real deal. You believe. You're sincere. I mean, this is something that you're that's a part of your life, and you take it very seriously. I know, as I watch and, and see and read it's all the lunacy that's out there on a regular basis, um, I, I'm glad that one of the functional lunatics is actually in a place in a position where he can actually maybe do something as opposed to just being there and then the lunacy uh, continues. So congratulations. Thank you. I appreciate that. I really, I really do. I, I'm thrilled. I'm functional thrilled. lunatic? Yeah. yeah. That's a compliment. Yeah. yeah. I don't want to call myself a functional Well, you got to be, to t- you know what? And to be in politics, you've got to be crazy. A little bit. Well, I, I'm obviously more than a little bit crazy. I've been doing it my entire life. So right. Yes, but I, you've been it, doing it on a different a different kind of level. You've been correct. the man behind the man and so forth and so on, and actually being the influencer that gets people elected. Correct. Yes. Okay. So how do you go from that to this? <laughs> how did it all happen? How did it all start? Well, it's, it's, it's a crazy story. I mean, I call myself the accidental senator. Oh, I like that. Um, because... Is that, is that the... Is that copywritten? Can I? No, you can have that. That's a great title for a movie. Yeah. Trademark. Yes. <laughs> trademark? Is <laughs> my, it trademarked my, my, already? Well, if you're pouring the watershed, I'd rather, I'm going to start with that too. Start with the um, watershed, Rye. Because I'm in the lottery. Hopefully I win. And watershed is actually in my district. Yes. I am their state senator. I'm touring them in two weeks, I believe. Sometime in early March, I'm touring the facility as their state senator. Okay. Now, what? how is that different as touring it as, as Bill DeMora? Bill what, DeMora what, probably couldn't get to tour it, but the state senator gets a private tour. Look at that. So it's just going to be you? Yeah. No, it myself and maybe a couple of the legislators. Do you have an entourage? No, I don't have an entourage. You know, are you going to get an Their entourage? lobbyist, their lobbyist is setting this up. This, their lobbyist is a friend of mine. And I told him how much I love Watershed because I, I enter every raffle. I did not win the Nochino Bear one last time. I was pissed off about that. Uh-huh. Um, I, was, I was at dinner there two weeks ago and had the whiskey business barrel. I had the flight. Nice. I loved it. Um. Oh, our good friend David Roberts from Gatto's Pizza. Hey, gotta get a Gatto's. Gotta get a Gatto's. We were just talking about you. And I'm sure you guys didn't order me a cheese this one like you no, probably did. we did. Oh, you did? Oh, my we Lord. Got you, we got you a Demora special that's Demora got nothing. Well, and Dave De Roberts is the king of making the Demora special. <laughs> Wait, no cheese? No cheese. I have a dairy allergy. No, no cheese. cheese. Oh, yeah, shit. no. We, we thought about that. Well, thank you. How about that's that? That's awesome. Thank yeah. you very much. Are you saying that Gatto's is just really uh, uh, like convenient and uh, uh, right. flexible to get any kind Gatto, of pizzas well, that you would when want? When the owners of Gatto's are friends of yours and and the owner happens to be your insurance agent, maybe they make you a cheese's oh, pizza yeah, once in a while. That's true. My son is the yeah. Oh, your son's the yeah. owner. Well, the son's a good guy. That's right. It's a family business. That's right. On paper, it's not his. Yeah, right. Yeah. Right. yeah. So yeah, on paper, it's not his. That's right. I know a guy. I know a guy. And I know a guy. And I know the guy that knows the guy. Right. Right. There's a little cheese for your wine in there. Oh, thank ah! you. Ah! Thank you. Thank you. Ah, you're referring to something earlier. Thank you, buddy. Are you sticking around for a minute? I'm going to stick around for a Okay, seconds. have pour yourself a drink. I, I have little grandkids running around the pizza shop. For about oh, that's fun. So, okay. you, you maybe need a bigger pour. Yeah, <laughs> we'll we'll get you a pour of something. We're tra- we're gonna be trying these uh these whiskeys that Billy brought. We also have the the watershed rye that isn't even out yet. So there's uh there's all kind of stuff going on here tonight. What's so the, what's the phone number? Two six three three seven three seven. Two six three thirty seven thirty seven. Gatto's Pizza on thirty four twenty Indianola Avenue. You can go online and order. You can they deliver. You can and, dine uh, in. Yeah, you yeah. Got to get a Gatto's. It was actually. Pack dining room tonight. Awesome. Nice. Yeah. That's good news. Are you guys going to use that? Are you going to use that slogan? Got to get a Gatos? I like it. You like it? Did you patent it yet? No, I didn't patent it yet. Okay, good. Yes, yeah. you might. Okay. Do you have a Super Bowl commercial this weekend? No, we don't. Oh, oh, we yeah. should make one. We're not part of the Super Bowl. <laughs> so. okay. right. I guarantee you'll be busy. I'm sorry to <laughs> the biggest pizza. <laughs> it was a good interruption. It the was biggest, a good pe- interruption. The biggest pizza day of the year is Super Bowl Sunday. I know. That's right. I thought the... Never mind. I thought the night before Thanksgiving was the biggest pizza night. That's the biggest, biggest bar night. Mm. No, pizza night, too. All right. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's always All right. pizza night when you got to get a ghetto. Right. So, <laughs> so, so, so now that we've done this <laughs> extremely long commercial for Gatto's <laughs> Pizza. <laughs> thank, so, you, thank you, David. The accidental thank senator. So the what happened was. Senator. Back to me. No, <laughs> no, no worries. Um, so as you know, Ohio's districts had to be redrawn 
after the census had to be drawn for the election that happened um, last year. Well, they, the other party tried to draw districts that were unconstitutional, and they were found as such, not one, not two, not three, not four, but five times. So they drew the first set of districts, and we had endorsed a woman for the district that I'm now in. Um, she'd run for Senate two years earlier in a different district and lost in a recount. She was our candidate. Well, then, the court, Supreme Court, Ohio Supreme Court ruled out the map, said unconstitutional, made them draw new maps. They drew new maps, knowing that this woman wasn't going to be removed because she has special needs kids in Worthington schools, even though she lives in the city of Columbus, it's the win-win district. They drew her out of the block, drew her out of the district by one block. So she couldn't, and because they knew she wasn't going to move to run for the seat. So what happened was, this happened right at the end of April, right before the May primary. That had to be pushed back because they didn't have legislative districts. So they're going to have an August primary for legislative seats. So this happened right at the end of April, and they drew out of the district. So me being the petition guy and the person that knows all this stuff, I went out the weekend before mm -hmm. the May primary and got signatures on a petition. You signed it. I did. Your neighbors signed it. We did. Uh, lots of guys that you know signed it. Yep. Um, I filed them on the primary election day of, of the May primary, which happened to be 90 days before the August primary, the legal deadline to file petitions. The Secretary of State denied me on the ballot. Why? So, because he said you didn't make the deadline of February for the May primary. He was keeping all in one deadline because he was trying to steal seats. And what happened was we sued in the Supreme Court of Ohio, Demora et al. versus LaRose. And Demora won four to three. Woo so you're a Supreme, you're in Ohio Supreme Court case? Yes, I am. Okay, did not know that. I'm all kind of cases, but I'm a Supreme Court case too. Yes. <laughs> I'm glad you said that. it. Yes. I was thinking it. Oh, I, I knew it. So, uh, so we won the court case. I was put on the ballot, and no one else filed. So I was no primary, in, in the August primary, no primary. And the district happens to be 70%. Democratic index. Mm -hmm. So my opponent was a college kid from Ohio State whose Facebook page had him hugging Jim Jordan. And if you live in my district, oh, that no. is not a good thing. That's no. a mistake. So I got 75% of the vote and I won in a landslide. In a landslide. And, nice. and a landslide. So that's why I'm the state senator now. I voted for you. All right. Yeah, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. That's how it worked out. That's how it worked out. All, so you all for luck. It's pure So you're luck. Not, it's not completely accidental. I mean, you, you, when you say you're the, the, you're the accidental senator. Yeah, that wasn't my it's goal not like in you life woke to be a senator. It's not like you like, I'm what? I'm who? I am? Yes. All right. <laughs> Actually, I woke up the day of June 30th when the Supreme Court case came out and said, uh, we're putting them on the ballot. I said, oh, shit, I'm a candidate now. Yeah. <laughs> Be careful I was, what you ask I was for. running five other campaigns at the time. Then all of a sudden, oops, now you're a candidate too. So oh, I had a, had a pretty busy election. Okay. Season. Now, pardon my, uh, let's call it, let's call it uh, political ignorance. How can, uh, how can you run campaigns and uh, also be a, a, a senator? Well, there's nothing wrong with it. There's nothing illegal about it. Um, I was running five other campaigns. I'm not going to ditch my clients that I've been working for the entire year. So you can have clients. You could still do this. Absolutely, yes. I can still do this. You can I'm still a, you can still I, run other campaigns while you're a senator. Yes. As long as I'm not the JLEC, Joint Legislative Ethics Committee, and I made a deal, kind of. I mean, I'm allowed to do it. But they asked me, kind don't of. run campaigns against any of your sitting colleagues in the state senate. Okay. So if one of my colleagues happens to be running for re-election, and, and in next year, in 2024, there'll be... So there are 17 seats in the Senate out, up. 16 of them are held by Republicans. So I got lots of people I could have worked for. But I said I would not run a campaign against one of my current colleagues. Now, if a seat is open seat, one of my current colleagues can't run again, and it's open seat, then I can run it. Hmm, gotcha. And I intend to do that for the other Franklin County seat, District 16 on the western part of Franklin County, because the current incumbent, uh, Stephanie Coogee, cannot run. I actually like Stephanie Coogee. We actually get along great. Um, hung out a couple times. Um but she can't run, so that's an open seat. And I think one of my current clients, who's a state rep, who lives in that district, is probably going to run, so I can run his campaign again. I think I got it. Yeah. I, 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 think, I think I got it. The answer is yes. I can do I still work for the Democratic Party. Yeah. I can right. still run campaigns. I can do nearly everything that I was doing before, except I can't work for people now that lobby. So gotcha. I, was, I had a client that's, yeah. that's a lobbying client that I was doing some stuff for with local public officials. 
-hmm. I can't do that now that I'm a senator because there's a lobbying firm. Okay, so being well-versed in the art and craft of running campaigns, did you run your own campaign or did you have to step back and let others do that for you? I ran it myself because I was, once I made the ballot, I was a winner. Yeah. I mean, the Pope couldn't beat me in this district if he ran as a Republican. The Pope? Yeah. You didn't knock on any doors then, did you? No, I didn't. I did, I did two mailings. You didn't have to. I didn't have to. I was a winner, mm -hmm. and I concentrated on my other clients. Now, I said I went to community events when I could on weekends, uh -huh. and I did two mailings, but I spent, we'll say in a 24-hour day, I spent one hour doing Build a More campaigning and, and, and 20 other hours doing everybody else's campaign. All right. What district are you in? 25. And what are the boundaries of the district? So I have Upper Arlington, mm -hmm. Grandview, Marble Cliff, the Knolls, the Italian Village, Victorian Village, Harrison West, all of The Ohio State University, mm -hmm. all of Clintonville, yep. Linden, and Northland. And you a were, lot. And you that's were pretty on, big, actually. It's a lot. It's just outside your district. I wasn't able to vote for Worthington. Oh. Okay, yeah, I don't have Worthington. Doesn't have Worthington. And no one so was we're sitting in, and, and we're there's sitting not a Republican that would want it wanted to go there's for a, that. They, they put a college kid up there because why? You yeah, can't, why did, they just, did they know that they had no chance? And that just, yes, of course they can't. Uh, did the kid want? The, did the kid really want to run? Well, they filed. They gave him. You know, they let him come to events. I, I say the kid because he's, he's a, kid. a kid. He's, he's twenty two years old. He's a kid. He's still in school. Yeah, he's still in college. Yes. Hmm. So, I mean, people. We have people in the Democratic Party that run in districts that we can't win. They go out there and run. Maybe they want to run for something else in the future. Something else, maybe a county commissioner or a township trustee or city council. They just get their name out there. Yeah, they get their name out there. But this kid didn't do any campaigning either because he was at school. He was a student most of the time. So he didn't do much campaigning. And, oh, by the way, no one in the district was going to vote for him because he's a Republican. Yeah. In this particular district. In this particular district. In district yeah. Like I said, and if he lived somewhere else out of Franklin County, he would have been a good candidate. But right, in Franklin County, bad candidate. Let me ask you this. Would you... You're a competitive person. Yes. <laughs> would you have embraced the challenge? And what would you, and, and if there was an actual legitimate challenger? Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. Would, would you have done, gone about it? I'd have done a bunch more mailings. I'd have knocked on doors and I'd have dirt on him that I got out of you. How would you have dismantled him exactly? Oh, well, I'd have showed a picture of him hugging Jim Jordan all over the district. <laughs> well, that's, that's already on Facebook. It's already but, out but there. But most voters don't look for this kids on Facebook. I would have put on a lip piece. Vote well, for what the about, Demora, but Demora what the Democrat, about, or vote for this kid who hugging Jim Jordan. Let right, me, right, right. Let me be <laughs> people that would actually would love that picture of him hugging Jim Jordan. <laughs> well, they got he did the twenty five percent of the people that voted for him. So there are two hundred some precincts in this district. I lost a total of four of them, all in Upper Arlington Ward four by a total of ten votes. I won every other precinct hmm. by hundreds and hundreds, hundreds, hundreds and hundreds of votes. Yes, yeah. yeah. I enjoyed. I enjoyed watching the scroll on yeah, election night. I watched it like, oh, look at him go. I, know. Yeah. I was telling Jim. I was texting I you. I know. I heard texting me. <laughs> yeah, and I was like, look at him go. Yeah, no, it was great. Well, one of the races I was spending most of my time on was a state rep race here in Franklin County, the eastern part of the county, um, Canal Winchester, um, Groveport. That state rep was the closest campaign for the legislature this cycle, named Rich Brown. He lost. A, he lost. He was losing an election night. But with the absentees that came in late and the provisional ballots, we won by 145 votes nice. on the third or fourth day of December. So we didn't know we won until first week of December when they counted all the votes. So I spent lots of hours running his campaign. I actually spent some of my campaign man money paying for things to help his campaign win. Okay. Is so, that legal? That's You're on the record now. Of course yeah. it's legal. <laughs> you run. <laughs> you win. <laughs> of course, he, he, had to, he had to report it. I mean, what I did, I paid for people. To do door to door, yeah, and it's an in-kind contribution to him. Of course, it's illegal. <laughs> I'm not going to jail for anybody. <laughs> no, yeah. So, you, you I, I, be, I believe that sincerely. All right, so you win. All right, and then after the win, you're you don't you're not officially sworn in until January third at the state house because yeah, January first was a Sunday. So second what, was a holiday. What, January third. What's, what's going on in that in that in that in that in that dead zone between winning the election and not officially being sworn in yet what, what's going well again on? i had for for a whole month i was worried about another election i was still working on another election i, I get that i get that but what about you now that you've got the, you know me you're there. I didn't, reality wasn't really are, setting are, yet. Are, it has, it didn't set in yet 
Well, I mean, we lost to the team up north, so I was kind of depressed for a while. I understand. I was going to say this. We're going to bring it up. You're you're getting ahead of me a little bit. Oh, I'm sorry. We asked you. I'm saying this is where we're at. So in the midst of all this, you know, you've won the election. You're elected, but you're not sworn in yet. The gig is not yours to do anything with. Correct. So where are you towing the line? Where where are you at emotionally and mentally at that point? The same. I mean, I didn't really give it much thought. Until I walked on the Senate floor on January 3rd and said, oh, shit, I'm getting sworn in today. Really, what, was that? what was that like? It was very, well, first, as you know. Did you cry? You, you couldn't make it. No. Did you um, cry? I had, a, I had, a, I had a, my own private swearing in event at the Italian Club. Yes. And had and I'm sorry, I 100 and some people there. All my friends, a lot of my friends were there. It was great. I had people from high school. I think I had three or four ex-girlfriends and my current girlfriend. <laughs> oh, uh, that's lots of people a picture there. right there. Wait, wait, wait. wait uh, no, back up. Yeah. <laughs> Ex-girlfriends. I'm, all my ex-girlfriends. All my, I'm friends with all my ex-girlfriends. I understand that. Sorry. You know. Okay, that's good. And your current girlfriend's okay with that? Oh, yeah. Well, I, I don't like I'm, They're all married. They're I understand okay. that. I'm yeah. saying, but it's okay. I mean, to have they, were, they were proud of you. They all gave me money. <laughs> oh, there you go. On their way for, out? Or for the election. For the, for the, election. the campaign. For the campaign. They all be donated. specific. Okay, yeah, they yeah, all yeah, donated, be specific. They all donated money to my campaign, yes. Yeah. Here, Billy, don't ever say we dated here. No, no. No, they all, no they now, all, they're, now, now at one point, they probably, they're probably like, yeah, you know. You, 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 uh, no. And now they're probably like, yeah, I, yeah, I dated the senator. I dated the senator. That's right. Well, yeah. So Seriously, though. But, I mean, you know, has it changed people's opinions? To, do people act differently? Be, not, not not your good friends, not 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 Bill and Karen Mattis who are in the background over there, not me, but people who are kind of on the on the uh, on the fringe of friendship with you. A- has it changed yeah. certain people's attitudes and how they some it talk? Has. I mean, they it, call it, me it, senator, and I hate that. Why? Well, we do it. We well, do it. They do not judgment. jokingly because I, I don't. My friends don't. I don't want my friends to call me senator. I think it's, no. In the state house, everybody kind of has to. It's kind of the that's the rules. I mean, lobbyists, staffers, they have to say senator or they could lose their job. That's just part of what the job is. Sure. But my friends who call me that and say, pick up the phone and say, Senator DeMora, I said, no, it's Bill. I mean, I don't want it. You know, I don't want my life to change. Well, I'm still uh, Bill. I know, but and we, we're doing it because it's still fresh and new. We'll, yeah, I understand. And, trust me. We'll, we'll It'll go. get old quick, I know. Yeah, I know. We'll, you, got we'll, me for, we'll you got me for four years. So It'll <laughs> get old quick. Yeah. Is that how long the gig is? My term is four years. Four years. Yes. And then after that? I don't know. I haven't thought about it. The, the, but after that, can you can you run again? I can run for re-election for another four-year term. Yes. Another four years, so you can get two terms. Yes, two terms out of it. Good medical. Oh, well, my health insurance started <laughs> February first, so next week is both my dentist appointment and my physical. Yes, because health insurance, I was on a single pre-ACA plan, paying nine hundred sixty-eight dollars a month for my insurance. Oh my god! And oh. now I'm on state insurance. It's a hell of a lot better and a hell of a, <laughs> and a hell of a lot cheaper. Yes, yes. That's <laughs> awesome. I mean, All it right. saved me eleven thousand dollars. That's good. Yeah, oh, yeah, that's oh, good. Huge. That's good. So, um, oh gosh, so many questions. At, at uh, right, let, 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 let's go back to the let's go back to the to what I like to call the the in between period when you're elected and you're still Bill Demora, not Senator Demora, officially. You know, as far as technically, I'm Senator Elect. Senator Elect. All right, yeah. Senator Elect Demora, but then you're also. Uh, the world's most superstitious Buckeye fan yes. in, in the midst of all this. Yes. Uh, it, do you feel that, do you feel that, I thought about this, do you feel that fate intervened like you can't have everything? Everything. Like you 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 were elected senator, but you you can't have it all. Uh, no, I mean, that didn't, that didn't really come to, come yeah. to play. I mean, I'll tell you what, being senator got me 35 row seats in the club. In, in the club level for the Ohio State football game. In Hell Atlanta. yeah. So, um, <laughs> but, but, but come on, you could have gotten that yourself. I'd have As said, Bill DeMora. Bill DeMora would have been in the rafters. Senator elect DeMora was on the 35th line sitting next to Chris Carter, Hall of Famer. So that was different. Um, had we won, the seats I would have had for the national championship game were in the club level on the 40 yard line. Mm-hmm. And that's, those are Bill DeMora seats, those are Senator elect DeMora seats as well. But actually, at that time, I was a senator because the game was January 9th, and I would have been a senator. You know how you do, like, all the regiment you for, before football games? You, you Home the, games, not away games. Uh, yeah, well, you, you do the script. Ohio, right, do all that right, stuff. Right, right. Did you do it uh, the, the night before the election? No. Oh. I was busy campaigning. Okay. All See? Right. Yeah, no, I'm script telling you. The night before the election, you go out and put yard signs up in front of polling places until 2 or 3 in the morning. 
Yes. Yeah. And I go back okay. to what I said yeah. about being sincere. I mean, he, you know, when it comes to this part of it, you know, he he's sincere and takes it very seriously. You, you're not, you're not going to change your crazy ways. I mean, do the, <laughs> do, do the people that you work with now know how insane you are as far as your, your, your fandom goes? So, the state center I mentioned earlier, Stephanie Coonsy from Hilliard, mm-hmm. sat four seats down from me this season. Right. And she, she's great, but she or somebody from her group would always get up like twice a quarter and either go get beer or go to the bathroom. And she said to me one time, she always knew where, where was she was sitting in because I'm always standing up on my real pacing. And she always said, Jill, do you ever leave your seat? I said, not during a game until I'm ready to leave. I said, you don't leave your seat, it's bad luck. So she, she looked at me, she kind of knows I'm crazy and swearing. Um, another state senator um, from Northwest Ohio, a uh, younger guy, was a Buckeye, but he only came to the Notre Dame game and the Team Up North game. And he and his buddies were, um, I'm not mentioning his name because we promised we wouldn't say That's anything. Fine. Fine. Uh, he or one of his three buddies were going down. They did two beers, three beers a quarter. Okay. And um, they were a little rowdy. And of course, put every other word out of my mouth in the second half was fuck. Um, yeah. So uh, was every, everybody had those words yes. going on. Um, and he said to me, he says, what happens in Ohio State for football stays there? I said, I'm yelling fuck every other word. Of course it stays there. I don't, I'm, I don't, what happens in football games? I'm, why would I tell on you? Because everybody thinks I'm already crazy. So yeah, I don't care. Okay. I'm not changing just because I'm a senator. I don't give a shit. No. I'm not but, changing my uh, I, And I respect that. I respect that. But. But what? But uh, people are going to, you know, perception is reality. So uh, how do you think you're going to be perceived? You haven't been senator during football season yet. Yeah. How do you think you're going to <laughs> well, be perceived? So like I said, I represent the Ohio State University. So it's not going to hurt it's me. It's not going to hurt you at all. I mean, have you been up Arlington during football season? I think every other house has an Ohio State flag or something in their mm-hmm. yard. So I think I'll get more votes by being, uh, like I said, everybody knows I only wear Ohio State clothes. So I went out and bought five Ohio State ties for the session. Because I have to wear ties now a couple days a week, which kills me. I know, you don't like a tie. Is that a clip-on? You, no, 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 it's, it's not a clip-on. Clip no, 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 it's no. not a clip-on. I it's don't a, own a clip-on. Yeah, so, um, but I bought five Ohio State ties, and I have all my Ohio State dress shirts. And so I so wear, you So they know that Senator DeMora is, I mean, this is, this. you wear this to work. Of course, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But you always, but you've always worn Buckeye. But not tie. ties, but yes. Not ties, but Buckeye. The last time I wore a tie before becoming a senator was at the White House when the Buckeyes we're getting honored by the winning the national championship. Right. Do you ever think they're going to... Do you ever think they're going to ask you to dot the I? No. No, no, no. I'm not Bob Hope or Buster Douglas. Yeah, <laughs> but you are probably the most rabid, avid Buckeye fan that's ever been in the Senate. Do you ever well, think maybe it could happen? No, I don't. Maybe your second term? <laughs> I, I don't think so. Listen. Would you do it? Oh, in a heartbeat. I yeah, killed three or four people. In there. <laughs> but, uh, um, but I am, I'm still the only person to ever get thrown out of the president's box. So, <laughs> so congratulations. Like, what did he say with such pride? Because I do take pride in it. <laughs> um, so the, the Ohio State vice president and a couple of other people from Ohio State came to meet with me last week. And she said, you know, as a senator for university, you usually get invited to the president's box for, for a game or two. I said, well, I'm not going. I said, first of all, I'm the only person I've already, it's called the Demora Rule. I'm not allowed to be there. I got thrown out. Would they actually call it the Demora Rule? Yes. Called what the Demora happened? Rule. Or can you say? I got thrown out because I was me. Oh. <laughs> um, but the Demora Rule is now somebody that has season tickets. Because back back when I got thrown out, I got Governor, former Governor Strickland's tickets. Because he had, as long as a former governor would always get four tickets in the president's box, as long as they buy them for the rest of their lives. So he knew that was a Buckeye fan, and he knew I would drive the people in the box crazy. So. He gave me his tickets, um, and what happened was supposed to happen. I drove them crazy, and I. what happened was the Buckeyes. This was the year of deer in headlights was our coach. and <laughs> John Cooper? Buddy? No, that's Luke Fickle. Oh, Fickle. Mm. And, um, that's not fair. He was horrible for us. Deer in headlights. Did you hear him on the sideline? Oh, what the hell he's doing? <laughs> he's a better coach now, but back at the time, he sucked. And <laughs> we're playing – Penn State at home, and we just stopped them on the goal line stand. We were down 10-7, to 7, uh-huh. and we stopped them. And the very next player, running back, fumbled the ball going out of the, out of the end zone, and I just yelled, God damn it, hold on to the football. I'm sure 90,000 other people said the same words, right. but Probably I have to worse. be – I was in the president's box with a bunch of stuffy Republicans, including 
<laughs> governor, former Governor Bob Taft and his wife, who's a teetotaler. Oh, yeah. And uh, um, so Bob Taft's wrong. wife goes up to the red coat, and I know what she's doing. I gave her the Sicilian death stare, death stare the entire way up the stairs. I stared at her, gave her the maloik. She walked up to the you red get, coat. Wait, wait. You gave Governor Taft's wife the maloik? Of course I did. I gave her the maloik. <laughs> of course. And I, I, watched her, I watched her all the way up to talk to the red coat. Did and she, she know what? Did she know what was happening? I don't think she knows anything in life. But I, 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 I stared at her the entire time, and she walks back, thinking, "I don't know what she just did." And the the, the red coat waits a couple minutes and says, "Well, sir, you know, people don't appreciate your language." And I said, being a smart ass, I said, "Well, I can say God damn it, God damn it if I say God damn it anytime I God damn want to say God damn it." I said about fifteen times in ten seconds, and they escorted me out of the box, put me in the elevator, rode all the way down with me until they got out of the stadium. And then, of course, I just walked around and had my regular seat and ticket and walked right into the game, my normal gate, and watched the rest of the game from my regular seat. All right. So, and we still lost. And we still, well, because at that point, superstitious wise, things that are. Oh, well, well I was knocked, in the box. That things, was a problem. That was a problem. Things were knocked out of whack. Yes, completely. So, right. you're saying if you get invited into that particular area again, you're going to refuse? I'm going to refuse. Bad luck. Well, now, if I play- like your integrity. Yes. Now, maybe, maybe, I'll say maybe, if we're playing Youngstown State or something. And we're going to win by 70 points. Maybe I'll go. Maybe I break that superstition so I can go more. Maybe. And that's how I got to bring my girlfriend once because I brought her to a game that, we're going to win, that we won by 70 points, knowing that we would win so I could break that superstition. I understand. You, you make things work for you whenever yes. you th- see the opportunity. Correct. All right. Let's take just a little. I got let's talk more, about this rye. I got more questions. Yeah, we're I, talk I got about more rye. questions, but we're going to take a little whiskey break here and try the, yeah. the Watershed Barrel Strength Six Year Rye. Which I did get a sneak peek of this uh, over a year what ago. Is it? Yeah, sixty-one point four. It is twenty-three. Yeah, sixty-one four. Yeah. So one twenty-two point eight. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, um, I remember when I talked with the watershed people before I even knew that the rye existed. I hinted. I said, "You guys ever going to do a rye?" And I read body language, and I could tell by their body language that, that they were working on something. Yeah. And they said, "Oh, well, we really can't." And I go, "Okay." All right. This is good. And then we had an opportunity to sneak a little peek while this was still in the yeah, barrel. We were thieving that bad. Boy. So there's only one barrel of six years. They made, so I got, like, we're going to have 125 no. bottles. That's it? Um, that I don't know. That I can't c- comment on. Yeah, I can't We were thieving out of one. I don't think, uh, yeah. I don't remember them mentioning more than one. Barrel. Yeah. And, uh, but uh, Does it say single barrel on it? It's it's barrel. But it's, does it say single barrel or does it not it's say single barrel? barrel strength. If it doesn't say single barrel, and then it's multiple barrels moved into. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, yeah, yeah. So it's, it's probably more. more than one barrel. Okay. More than one barrel. I would think so. I think if they're, I think if they made the decision to do this, they would do more than one barrel. Yeah. Well, well again, it. you ask. Yeah, and it is limited release, so. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah I'm so in the raffle. Have you already taken a sip? Yeah, it's awesome. It's, it's you can, very good. You get the heat on the end. I like it. It is. It's hot, but it's sweet. It is sweet. Oh, I'm digging the nose. Mm-hmm. Very fragrant. Very good. I mean, it's what I remember the night we uh, took oh, it out yeah. of the barrel. It's a yeah, damn yeah. good rye. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's a lot different than the two ryes I brought, which are a lot less proof. And, That's okay. And um, from made in Iowa from Iowa corn and rye. Unlike yeah, this. I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. But they're different. There's a story behind these things, too. So We had uh, uh, Jim Canepa on last week. And I was at dinner with Jim Canepa last Monday. I know. Monday, we right? talked about that. You know, you guys had met kind of for the for first time. First time. Yeah. 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 He, he, <laughs> I always like people that meet you for the first time. And I ask them, what'd you, so what do you think of Bill Moore? And they go, um, <laughs> it starts with, it starts with, um, I go, so I just, it was all very positive when oh, it was all just, said and done. Just but yesterday, you're, you're, you're an interesting pill to swallow when you uh, upon first meet. You know I, that, right? I understand that. Okay. All right. Um, so just yesterday, I put Jim in touch with the people at Bluegrass Distilleries, the one that makes the blue corn bourbon that I've had on the show oh, before. I love that stuff. And because they want to come to Ohio, and so I put the two of them together. So hopefully, I'm helping to initiate Bluegrass Bourbon to come to Ohio soon. As a senator and a whiskey lover. Yes. And let's talk about, you know, because... Um, he mentioned last week that Ohio is number four in the country behind bigger states like California, Texas, and Florida right. as far as what they're doing in respects to revenue with whiskey. So as a senator, 
will that be something that, for the good of the state of Ohio, as far as revenue and so forth and so on, is it something you could actually influence and help with? Because well, you know this world, you've known this world for a lot of years now. No, and I talked to him about that, and that's he said, I told him that I had connections at some of these craft distillers that we don't get in Ohio, bluegrass being one, um, old pogue being the other, mm-hmm. and said, you know, I'd like to get them in. He said, if you can help facilitate that, we're all for it. So bluegrass, they've already given each other, I've given each other their numbers, everything, and I'm going to work on old pogue later this week. Old Pogue's one of my favorites. Old Pogue was good, yeah. We Thanks, got John. the Old Pogue, Thank and you John. brought me that Mary's that Marysville Maysville ride. Club ride. Mays, Mays, yeah. Marysville, Marysville, yeah. yeah. I still have a little you bit. You guys don't even know my cheeses one, are you? No, no, no. He, there, there, there's, there's that's the cheeses one. Is there a cheeseless one? Yes, there is. Don't. Which one's the cheeseless? The one that doesn't have cheese on it. <laughs> <laughs> I think the one you guys it's are eating. That, it's that kind of getting right to the, the heart of it that makes you. Yeah, there's no cheese on it. The one that has no cheese on it. Gotta be that. Oh, the pepperoni and no cheese. Yeah, correct. Yeah. Okay. There you go. Give him okay. that. That's it. That's it. Right. That's got. He got. He's got. Quit one. eating the senator's pizza. All right. Do you want some? Sorry, sir. Oh, you're fine. Pizza, Greg? Yes, sir. Please. All right. So, um, we like. Uh, this is great. People, when you get, for those of you who are in the lottery and actually win, congratulations. For those of you that, that will get a chance to buy this, when it comes out, um, it's worth every penny. You will love it. And it's another it's another high check mark uh, on Watershed. Who's and what's like seventy eight dollars or something? Would you win? Uh, That's what I, thought. I, I think I, I, I don't want to quote the price, but I think it was somewhere between the seventy eight and eighty nine dollars a bottle. It's worth so it. It, it's worth it. This is really great. This is well done. Well done, Watershed. Very good. Okay, so uh, you guys are getting are you cleansing your palate with the pizza. Is mm-hmm. that what you're doing? All right. I guess I should have a piece as well. Right. Everybody else is eating. Let me, which one? That's not Billy's, is it? No. No, no this is just, I got you. We don't know where the paper plates are. So. The paper plates are back in the in the, in the the back room on top of the microwave. Okay. All right. Okay, so. This is awesome. Which one are we going to try next? Well, I bought several, so. Which one do you want to try first? I'm going to explain who they are first. You guys can pick. Hotel Tangle is another craft Indeed. distiller. Yep. Yeah. Um. It's, it's dealing with veterans. I think make this all the proceeds go to veterans groups. Yeah, out of Indianapolis. Yeah. My dad knows them. Um, it's actually distilled, it says, by Middle West Spirits in Columbus, Ohio, but it's bottled in Indianapolis. Okay. So Middle West makes it. They don't, I don't think you can buy it here yet. Um, they have a couple of bourbons. They have this. They have a single barrel and they have a rye. Um, I've had a little bit of it. It's pretty good. The second one is a brand new thing called Fresh. It's a craft distiller. Um, it says it's bottled in Paris, Kentucky, but their store, kind of in a bar, is in Lexington, downtown Lexington, a few blocks from Bluegrass. In the past few years, I'd say the last four or five years, you've kind of taken a hankering to uh, the craft distillers. You're digging them, as opposed to the big boys. Why? I've been to all the big boys, and I like, I mean... As you know, we're going to get a barrel from Woodford Reserve in March for the Italian Club. Right. So I like the big boys, but when you've had them, you've been there, you want to try something new. And these craft distillers are coming up so frequently now. I mean, Watershed is a craft distiller. They're making right. some good product that you can actually buy before the millennials and everybody get a hold of it and you can't find it anymore. Right. Um, so... Um, the fact that you can't get this in Ohio yet means I can go down to Kentucky and buy it, like I mean, like Old Pogue, like other things that are great bourbons. I mean, Peerless is one. Nowadays, you love Peerless. You, I love Peerless. You can't get into Peerless unless you make a reservation two months in advance. Mm-hmm. So we're going down into the month for the Bourbon Classic, a couple friends and I, and I booked my Peerless tour. They only had one tour available left on the day that we're going down. Of course, I booked it. I booked Rabbit Hole because that's always booked. That, that's a one regular tour that I've never been to. So I'll go to my last one rabbit hole, the last one on the bourbon trail in February. Let me month. be let me be that guy. Not this guy. That guy. Hey, you've been to one one distillery tour, you've been to all of them. They just do the same thing. Um Thoughts? Well, obviously the process of making bourbon is the same. So right. you're gonna have your mash bill and you're gonna put in a the still column or the pot still column. 
and distill it and get your white lightning and then you know put it in the barrels and let it sit to get the color and everything else. So that's correct. But some of these smaller ones, you can actually, I mean, like bluegrass right now is the size of your kitchen. And this room, that's the whole, that's the whole distillery right now. Now they're building a new place in Medway with Rick houses. They're, they're expanding because their bourbon is so good. They're expanding, but right now it's a little small place. It's more intimate. You can actually, you know, they actually, uh, several times, when you when you pre-ordered their single barrel bluegrass bourbon, you went to the you poured it yourself and put your own label on it. Right. But you put, put your name on their label, and I still have some of that. So it's more intimate. You get feel like you're more involved in the process, uh, and it's also not as crowded as trying to get in. You know, trying to get in um, a lot of these all these big ones now. And not um, everybody has the same story of how they kind of started out. So that's interesting. Yeah, the, well. but this, the craft ones are obviously different. Yeah. Um, the big guys have been around for 100 years. These new guys just started. I mean, Peerless is family owned. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they make, I tell you, if anybody wants to go to a place, when you go to Peerless, buy a single barrel. Every time I go there, I buy whatever single barrels I have, rye and bourbon. Cause We've actually tried to, to, to yeah. get a single barrel for the, yeah. for the club. We have. Yeah, yeah. And we will. We will. Oh, absolutely, we will. Do you think we'll be able to do it now that you're a senator? Well, I think I'm going <laughs> to... I think if the governor of Kentucky is reelected as a Democrat, I'm going to have him take care of that for us. Yeah. Yeah. You got to you gotta kind of dig some of the residuals that come here that, that have nothing to do with... That they're just there. That's... I find that kind of fascinating and kind of cool. I've always been a horse trader. I've always been a guy that... You know, behind the scenes, you know... You make deals, you do all the other stuff. So it it's kind of the same thing. The trouble is now I have to pay for everything myself. I can't take freebies from right. No, I understand that. that. I understand and, and that. I don't. But it's costing me a lot of money being a senator, I can tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> because more opportunities are coming your way to be able to take advantage of. Right. Yes. Right? But they have to but they do cost and that's gotta come out of your pocket. But there are opportunities that maybe would not have come your way. True. I mean, that's just the nature Although of the nature my of the opportunities beast. Are usually because I'm working for the Democratic Party and I have opportunities that way because i help people i do other things so i mean the governor of kentucky doesn't know me as bill demore state senator he knows me as bill demore the guy at the hundred Direct party that does my convention stuff for me mm-hmm. right I, right and that, but that's and that's the bill demore that they love and respect so but now that you've kind of gone up a notch and they're probably hoping you're still the same bill demore so that's 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 as i kind of very gently swing back into the senator part of it are you concerned about changing? No. Are I'm too old concerned? to change. A Are lot of women concerned? have tried and a lot of women have failed. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's one that's been hanging in there for well, a Well, but minute. she's not trying to change me. She she understands that I'm not going to change and she accepts that. Okay. And plus we dated like 16, 17 years ago the first time. I understand mm-hmm. that, but sometimes, uh, sometimes change happens unconsciously because of where you're at and what you're doing in life. That, that's not, I don't. I don't think that's. Me. I, and I, and I'm, not, I'm not saying that you need to comment and say, you know, that's never going to happen. But you understand what I'm saying? I do. Sometimes being in, you're in this position for the next four years, and you're going to be coming across a lot of things that you've never come there across before. So I'm, I'm curious as to if you have any thought process already planted in your head, like I'm never going to do this, I'm never going to do this, and I'm never going to do this as I'm a, if I'm a senator. Now that I'm a senator. Well, no, I mean, I, I'm never going to do something that's going to hurt my standing of being a senator. I'm not going to, again, I'm not taking freebies from anything. I mean, as I told... I'm not questioning your integrity at all. I can't think of a person with more integrity than you. I mean, like I said, I've known you for a long time. You're crazy, and I say that in an affectionate way, but you're committed, and you're sincere. So the the integrity issue is, doesn't even... It's not right. even one to be broached. Well, well one of the things... It's, but you're in a crazy world right, right now. But one of the things that keeps you grounded is the fact I'm one of seven Democrats out of 33. So there's 26 Republicans, only seven us Democrats. So we're not getting a lot of stuff done. We don't have a lot of power. So if... I mean, I think part of the problem with all these scandals that you read about every day in the paper with going on down to say the householder trial, I mean, Ohio being right now the most corrupt state in the union by any measure of... Really? I mean, yes, it is. By any measure, by anybody you ask. Um, the fact that no one gives a shit about me because I'm one of seven out of 33 in the minority is a good thing. Because, I mean, now I'm not going to be tempted. That's not who I am. But sometimes people, 
in a position of power decide, well, I'm in it for the money or I'm going to do it for the wrong reasons. And they make deals or they say they're going to do something for somebody that they're not allowed to do. And they can do it because they are in power and they go down the wrong path. And that's what happened with Larry Householder. That's what happened with several other people in this state. How do you think that happens? What do you think happens? I mean, well, as an all this money gets to you. I mean, I give Householder credit. I mean, there have been Democrats before that took ten thousand dollars to do something stupid. At least Householder got thirty six million on the deal. I mean, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean go for it. He got a bigger bank for his buck. Bank for his buck. Yeah. I mean, he didn't sell out for ten thousand. He, he went thirty six million. I got him some credit for that for holding out for that long. But, uh, <laughs> but, I mean, I think it, it does corrupt people. But I mean, I'm not. Like I said again. I never thought I'd be here. It wasn't my life's goal to be here. I'm um, just build a more of that Democratic Party hack. Back up. Back up. You're telling me that over the course of all the time that you've run campaigns, it never entered your mind ever, ever to think about running for a, no. a political Hell office no. of some sort. No way. Too many rules. Okay, but now you're there. And now, now there. there's rules. Yes. So now, how does that Billy DeMora deal with this Billy DeMora? I'll play a lot less golf for free, I can tell you that. <laughs> uh, uh, by the way, I'm pouring Ransom Bourbon in some Oregon. Okay, well, for this, this, which one? Is that what we're having right now? Is that what we're Yeah, trying? that's why it's pouring mm-hmm. Ransom. Okay. You love the Oregon. So this you love the Oregon stuff. Ransom is actually made by the same people that own Duck Pond Winery. Okay. In Oregon. it's uh, They make Pinot Noir. Okay, good. Good. Um, a lot of them here I actually believe it or not, this is the only gin I've ever drank that I liked is Ransom Gin. Oh, but they make a pretty good bourbon, and I brought it. Oh, I made it. This was on the trip that I drove across country, and I brought this bottle. The only bottle of bourbon I brought for the entire two week trip. I mean, I had 18 cases of wine with me in the car, but I brought one bottle of bourbon. That was this one. It's something simple, but I love the glass uh, lid, yeah. the cork. There's a complete, you know, 100% okay. glass what cork. Kind of, what kind nice. of. Uh, let me see it again. Let me see the bottle again. Ransom. It's right here. Ransom. All right, so what was it? What was it about this bourbon that you like so I much? I just, I mean, maybe because I was drinking wine for a week and a half and wanted something different. <laughs> and then, but, do um, they do they do something with their? Is wine incorporated into their? No, no, it's totally no, separate. Barrels. It's called the Great Oregon Wine Company. Is the name of the company that makes Ransom Liquor and Duck Pond Wine, and it's the only place though you can go to. It's got a sweet nose. It does. It's the only place you go to. You you can get a taste of either the booze flight. And you pick one of their six or seven boozes, or you oh. get three or four of them. This is very pleasant. Yeah. Or you take their wine flight. I took the booze flight. Could it, again? This is pleasant. This is very pleasant. Very smooth. It is. Um, it's familiar, in a good <laughs> way. <laughs> yeah. How long it's, have they been bottled? Familiar. Yeah. Um, not that long. They started with gin, obviously, because that's what you make first. Pepper, is, a lot yeah. of peppery. You make your gin. You make your vodkas. Right. No. But they very make nice. a very. They make a botanical gin that I actually like, and I don't like gin. But somehow I like their gin. Um, Interesting finish. It's a little young. It's a, Is it young? How old is it? Uh, it's, I'm sure it's... Does it tell you? Yeah, peppery. It's, interesting finish. Not a real long finish. It's only 88 proof. For me, proof. anyway. Only 88 proof. It's I mean, mouth I hot. love... I love... I love so this is only... The last, this is the only last batch number two. So this is only a second batch they ever released. Hmm. It's, it aids a minimum of two years. Like everybody else has to be two years. Yeah. Uh, and it's only... This is a bottle of 466 of batch two. So they only made it. This is the second batch they made. I, I mean, the first time I tried it was probably the first batch. This was the second batch. What do they call it? It's a Kentucky hug or a, what are they, like a Lexington kiss or they something? They call it the hug, the hug afterward. The, the but, hug. But, but the kiss is when it's just in your mouth. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, this is great. Mm-hmm. I, I would drink this on, on a, if it was available on a regular basis. It's and nice. it's not. It's not. No. This I'm is not sure they sell it outside. This, of, this is our one. In no, I don't think it's it outside of Oregon. Oh, okay. oh, really? Wow. None of these that I have that I brought tonight. Can you currently buy in Ohio? Because they're too small. And I find this very interesting about you because you're kind of a, and I say this in a, in a, in a, in a positive way, you're kind of a snob <laughs> when it comes to wines, whiskeys, and libations. So I, 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 I find it interesting that you embrace these other whiskeys, bourbons, ryes from other states. You, you you strike me, you've always strike me as a person that would be very like, if it's not from here, then I don't want it. You know, you drink your whiskey neat. I had to beg you, beg you when we picked our old Forrester bottle to put a drop of water into a glass just to let it open up a second. And thank you, thank you, by the way, for indulging me in that because we ended up picking up a great bottle because oh, of it. The bottle was great, yes. The bottle was great. But 
you know, I find, what is your reasoning now for embracing these other whiskeys? But why why have you become so open minded in respects to whiskey? Because of current market conditions, you can't find a goddamn thing here in Ohio. <laughs> That's not true. That's not true. We're well, getting more and more whiskeys all the time. More, yes, I'm talking about in the last five, six years, if you wanted something, you had to wait in line up the street here at Wyland. You had to wait somewhere. And when it came in on a Wednesday, if you weren't in line and you got to be one pick out your one bottle, then okay. you were SOL. Yeah. You, need to watch the, you need to watch and listen to the Kanepa podcast because we addressed that situation. No, I know that. He told me the same thing. Um, when I had dinner, We were. I swore in the new officers of the Ohio Bar Association, Ohio Bar Owners Association, last Monday night. And he was there as their guest. I swore in all the new officers. I'm allowed to do that now, by the way. I can swear people in being a state senator. Well, I can't really? marry people yet, but I can swear people in. I can marry people. Yeah, I know. I need to get that certificate from somebody because someone, <laughs> someone wants me to marry them. Wait, I can do something that the senator can't? You do know, lots of things I can't. <laughs> <laughs> um, I can marry people. Or, too, or don't want to. All right, so what can I do? What, what, uh, you so know. I hope, because... So these two are bringing in a part of a whiskey club that I get. Are you still in that club? Yes. Okay. I'm one of the few people in Ohio that I think they're in this club. It's called Rack House Whiskey Club. All right. The sec- Sextro? So there's a story behind the, the Sextros. They, these are, they were they were corn farmers in Iowa, and then the, the Depression hit. And it didn't make any money, and it was um, Prohibition. So they sold. They let a bootlegger make booze. In their barn, okay, and and then they made it, let them make it out in the in the woods, out in their yard, and then they got word that the liquor agents were coming to take it all down, and they buried all these barrels of bourbon in these people's yard, but they still haven't found them. But but after prohibition, they got the recipe for these ryes as quick as close to it as possible, and they. Started making them again, and then they got bought out, and now they they started making these. Wines. It says historically accurate 1931 recipe. Correct. Now it's not they they, they think they've got they used chemicals now and scientific stuff to get the recipe again from that. There's, mm. still, there's actually still people on that property searching for these barrels of bourbon, hoping to get just one it's, molecule so they can break yeah. it up. It's like the whiskey version of Oak Island. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm never going to find anything. They're never going to find it. Well, they They're actually, never going to find they it. They actually, just a short while ago, found the remnants of the still. Oh. So they think that there's barrels out there somewhere, and they're looking for it. good? Whiskey? Well, no, no. Just to, get the, just to get the sample of it, to chemically analyze it so you can make, you know, Break down one. the family. Which one should we try first? Um, the red, I think the black is better than the red. That's why there's more black drink. So, all right, let me red. try the red first. Yeah, try the red let first. me try the red first. I mean, and your neighbor Karen liked both of them because she likes rye. Her husband's full of shit and I like rye. He said, well, first of all, her husband's not full of shit. Secondly, I agree, he should drink more rye. All right. And, and Karen, Karen obviously has better taste than her husband. Ooh. Don't worry about that. It happens all the time. Oh. You didn't break anything. It happened last week. I know it does. It just it's it's an old it's an old table from the fifties. It's gonna it's gonna creak. It's gonna creak every once in a while. It's a, anyway. As long as it doesn't collapse, it's not gonna collapse. If it does, oh, oh, that'd be a disaster. Yes. Anyway, it's like red licorice. Licorice. It's like a really sweet. It's like a candy. Yeah, you're right, Johnny. Yeah, yeah exactly. I'm. I'm getting there, baby. Uh, I'm so proud of both of these guys. I, I've said it before in the podcast. Their their nose and their palates have improved so much. But the the fact that you picked up on that, yes, that's exactly. It smells like red licorice, like, like little red licorice. It doesn't taste like it, but it smells like it. it smells like it. Um, to, it the the like Madisons are behind us. Is my friend John back there somewhere? He is. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. <clears throat> It's still sweet as as well with the taste. Uh, you know, you guys are welcome to, yeah. to come in and pick up a glass and, and join in on some of this if Billy's okay with of us course. draining his bottles. Absolutely, of course. That's what they're here for. Yeah. The, the red liquor is so, spot on. You're right. Yeah. Somebody, I'm going to Kentucky in two and a half weeks. I can buy another stuff again. No, I can't buy this, but I can buy the rest of the stuff in Kentucky. In I haven't tried this yet. What's a, it's very sweet. Yeah. It's got smooth up front and smooth in the back. Okay. And this is a rye. Yes. Now, a lot of people rye. say, "Oh, rye, rye's are so bitter. Well, rye's are so." This is a very smooth. Rye. Mm-hmm. Oh, they're both rye. rye. They give them the rye. Yeah. 
I love Rise. I think I, I think I probably love when if I had to confess, I think I probably love Rise more than I do actual bourbon. I love bourbon to death. Don't get me wrong, and I will drink it. I like some Rise better than some bourbons, and some yeah. bourbons better than some Rise. Mm-hmm. Well. Being a senator, that's exactly the, the, sure. the comment I would expect. Shut up. <laughs> He's a centrist. No, I am not a centrist. Maybe on bourbon. That's about the only thing you call me a centrist. Uh, this is great. This is great. So what 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 are you, what's your, uh, what's your unicorn? What haven't you found yet? What are you looking for uh, with all your whiskeys? Have you heard about anything that you want to get your hands on that you haven't Besides tried yet? bottle of rye, if I win one, you mean? Uh, this one? Uh, from, you just tried it tonight. I know. I want, well, I want a bottle of it. So, I didn't win the Nocino barrel. No. Oh. You like the, the Watershed Nocino's No, last year I won one. It was unbelievably spectacular. I loved it. I, saw, I tasted it first because this yeah. bar in, uh, in, in West 6th Street, or no, somewhere in, the where, in Cleveland, got a barrel of it. And I tried it up there. I said, you guys have Watershed here? I said... I said, how oh, just regular water? I said, no, we got one barrel of it. It's no chino barrel. I tasted it. It was, fell in love with it. Won the lottery. Drank it. Somehow got another one. <laughs> um, but this year, I didn't win the lottery. So, I had to do some finagling. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, I got a bottle, eventually. Yeah. Yeah. But, but so they didn't win a bottle. They gave me a $25 gift card to have dinner there. So, oh, yeah. we had dinner there. And that's why I had your flight with the no chino and... The, the whiskey business barrel and the regular oh, stuff. You, oh, you you were there for the, you you tried the. I tried absolutely the flight. Of course I did. I knew it was your barrel, so I had to try it. Did you like it? Of course I did. Yeah, it's nice. good. It's sold out. I know you said that. It's no, great. Well, no, there no, might no. be one left. One. Maybe after tomorrow well, I'll, I'll get it. Tomorrow. One left I might. Well, go you've there. got one, so we can hold that up next time. Uh, no, I'm actually I, the reason I bought that bottle, and now I got to commit to this because I'm saying it on the podcast. I'm taking it down to uh, Florida for my brother-in-law. There you go. Well, then you bring it back when he doesn't drink. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> no, since, I, since you're now blowing us off for our barrel tasting, um, I'm gonna try not to blow you off for the barrel tasting, but now I'm gonna have to figure out something else. Got that? You're right. In a, in in the process of doing that, so for the black I, if it, it the, the the best possible case scenario I can figure out is is meet meeting, there on Monday. Meeting meet you there on Monday. Well, yeah, Woodford's not exactly. We it's a nice hike from Louisville. It's a good 45 50 minutes. I'm going to Louisville. What's another 45, 50 minutes? I mean, for us to drive you there. Yeah. All right. We'll figure it out before it's all said and done. That's another story for another time. Um, Okay. So what are we trying now? The black one? Yeah, we'll try the black. Now, what is the difference between the red and the black, in your opinion? Um, Because I love the red. That's why you said said there's more of the red than there is of the black. You like the black better. What barrel is it phrased in? Good. What barrel is that phrased in? What does it say? Uh, authentic. Okay, what are you looking for? What, what information do you want? What's Distilled from rye and cane. Fish and oak barrels. Yes. Well, they're the same as different recipe, I guess. Okay, what's the difference between the two? One tastes better than the other, in my mind. But... <laughs> uh, this one okay. is... That one's 80 proof. Yeah. And this one is 100 and, no, 120, 134 proof. Yeah. Whoa, whoa, oh, yeah. well. <laughs> Uh, it's a, it's that? definitely a notch up. I had, okay. some, I had to do some quick math. I'm, I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad we did the red first. I'm glad you did really well. Okay, and this one does not smell like licorice or candy. In my opinion, no. But there's some fruitiness to it, almost like a grape. Actually, you're wrong. They're both eighty percent, eighty proof. They're both eighty proof. Yeah, okay. that was. You were looking at the, the bottle number. He got the bottle number. He's looking at the bottle number. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I was gonna say I'm and about by to the way, die. Like, damn. Yeah. I'm about to die. Yeah. We're only on number two. No, it's still sweet though. There's a fruitiness. Yeah. To There's it. a fruitiness to it. I agree. Yeah. You like the black better than the red? I do. Why? Because it's less fruity. Less fruity. So you prefer something with a little bit more bite than sweet? Yes. Okay. And that's the beautiful on thing. On rye, about, especially, yes. Yeah, and that's the beautiful thing about being a whiskey drinker. That's right? why the Rodershed rye is awesome. Yeah. And it actually cleared up my sinuses because it's so high proof. Yeah, it's <laughs> nice. Because right? um, this weather is driving me crazy. It goes cold, hot, cold, hot, cold, hot, and my sinuses are out the wazoo. Out the wazoo? These are as smooth. We, we tried a Irish whiskey last week. This yeah. reminds me of that Irish yeah, yeah. whiskey. Kanepa brought, a, yeah. Kanepa brought a teeling Irish whiskey mm. that was a, a single barrel, I believe, of some sort. Uh, and it was 
I think I said on the Good. podcast, I could drink a water glass of it. Right. It was that smooth. I was thinking more of a baby bottle and just stick it right. It just, it was, Did it, was it? <laughs> it was, huh? Did he leave it? No, he didn't leave it. He didn't leave it. But they're you all. talked to him about that shit. Although I'm not leaving mine. Either. Well, they're all. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> well. I did bring five, give me, though. Give me, give, you did bring five to, to taste. You did. I, I commend you on that. You know, because we weren't sure we were going to. We were gonna open up this one, but uh, you know, since we're not doing the podcast next week, uh, and yeah. we wanted to get it out there and let people know that it's my fault. I didn't tell you that we had to drink it. <laughs> no, he gave me. Yeah. He didn't get all the information. I worked hard to get that, man. So you did. You well, worked hard. Well, I'm I'm jealous because if I don't win one, I'm going. To, I'm, well, I'm going down to Florida. Come back up from his brother-in-law, whatever that was doing. You can break in while he's out of town. And just take he's that taking it to his brother-in-law. As you just oh, said. No, no, the, the, the no, the ride. It's right. Oh there. no, that's the one he's keeping that one. Oh, that, I'll break in and steal it. That's right. His neighbor's got a key. I'll come and steal some. That's true. <laughs> I've lost track of how many people have a key now. <laughs> I really, do. I really don't. But yeah, the neighbors have always had a of key. Of course. So I'll come and steal some bourbon. I mean, um, listen, your, that neighbor, was... your neighbor tried to steal everything in my thing. I got a sign: "Do not touch Bill Mattis in my house." So, are you gonna move? Where are you move? Are you gonna move? Move where? You're, you're senator now. You're gonna Get move? the fuck out of here. They're going to carry me out of my place in a body bag. <laughs> no, isn't no. there a house on now, the hill in this district? Now, actually, though, if you go outside and look at my view across, my plate now says Sen 025. I got oh. senator plate. Okay, nice. so you are embracing it a little well, bit. Well, I mean, listen, they were free. Yeah, they had to be. Oh, shit. I'm, all legislators, reps, and senators can get the plates. With, it's just REP okay. and the district number or SEN. All right, number. now I got to ask. And now I got to ask, what else is free? No, not free. I mean, well, I had I mean, plenty of plates. I, I, I understand. I already I understand. paid for my plates. Had I had mm-hmm. I not had plates in a car, it was a new car, I'd have to buy them. But since I already paid for plates, this just exchanged them. So I have to pay for new plates when, uh, you know, I would pay for my set of plates for this year. Now, when they come due again in October, I have to pay for them. Okay. But they don't okay. make you pay for plates twice when you already paid for a whole year plates <laughs> and take them okay. away. Right, right. So they can see you coming now with your plates. Well, yeah. They can. All right. So, and I do have my own parking spot underneath the state house too. Oh, nice. Well, nice. you should. Everybody, all, all legislators do. Yes. So, are you? Are, are you digging this? Are you kind of like like? Let's just seriously. No, I mean, yeah. It's you, there's, there's come on. Okay, there's, I like I like parts thing. of it. I mean, the fact that I literally have meetings the last two days, every half hour for six straight hours, in between committee meetings and today under, oh, in between session. That's gonna be a drag. And then I last night I was at an event in Northland. Uh, Northern Community Council, my constituents, I went out to introduce myself to them. I got home just in time for the State of the Union. Tonight, I went to an event and then came here. Now, this is obviously fun, but tomorrow I've got literally meetings from 9 a.m. until, um, what's tomorrow night, Thursday? Mm-hmm. Yeah, Thursday. What time am I doing tomorrow night? Hell, I don't even know. My don't, schedule, you have, don't you have people? Don't you have a person? I do. Have, I, have, I have staff people, and my schedule now is run by them. And I don't control my own life anymore. That's the problem. That's that's yeah. got to really bug you. It does. I, I, I've always scheduled myself. I mean, and I'm very anal about scheduling myself. But now, I don't know what I'm doing until I walk in my office and my aide hands me my schedule for the day. And it's got 17 fucking things on Holy it. Holy shit. And, oh my God. and that's that's my life now. I do I whatever didn't realize but, that a state senator here's... had that kind of schedule because the, the, you figure... You know, if you're on the national level or whatever, if you're a congressperson or a senator, state senator, like Senate, Senate, U.S. Senate, yeah. U.S. Senate, that you would be being pulled every direction. I didn't know that you were putting that many hours in as a state senator. Well, yeah, I mean, the thing is, That's I live crazy. here, so right. I have, so I have no excuse. Well, I'm not driving from Claremont County or Asabula County to come in for a meeting. Sure. For one meeting on a Tuesday, I live here. It takes me. Well, today, 15 minutes because Third Street was backed up because they had a wreck on it or something. <laughs> but normally, it takes me three minutes to get from my house to the state house. Right. So, um, That's a curse. It, it is kind of, <laughs> it's a curse. It's a curse, but here's the thing. But I also have another full-time job. So I've, oh. I, I finally had to tell my staff, on Mondays and Fridays, I have to do my other job because I actually have work to do for my other job. And so you know, you can't schedule Mondays and Fridays. I have to work my other job that's also paying me. Yeah. So you get Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays because those are the days that committees meet and days of sessions. Or yeah. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. I said Monday and Fridays at my other job. I said I can't be doing Senate stuff when I have to do political stuff because I have other political meetings. I have to, you know, I have. I was in charge of the mayors and city council's petitions. They filed them last Tuesday, and I had to make sure I checked all the mayor's signatures, make sure you had enough valid signatures to get filed. 
I do the same for most of the city council. So I have other jobs, and I can't. I have to do my other jobs too because they pay me, just like the Senate job pays me. But here's the thing that I know about you: if they give you a list of 17 things that you got to do mm-hmm. on a Tuesday, Wednesday, or a Thursday, you're going to do your damnest. To oh, get they all done. got done. Of course, yeah, they all got done yesterday. They're going to get done. Yeah. Yeah. You got You got to check all the boxes. Yes. Uh, that's who you are. I know. So that's why. That's why it drives me crazy. They schedule me to help. I have to do everything. Yes. Mm. No, I mean I'm gonna have to, you know. So oh, tomorrow night I'm saying tomorrow night I have the Franklin County Democratic Party meeting. That's what I'm doing tomorrow night from six to eight. Is it my county party committee, which I'm on? We have our meeting tomorrow. So that's instead of doing other things, I'm going to. And have what, my what party will be involved in that meeting? Uh, we have to pick our give, person. Give me, the, give me, give me an, uh, so one of the a bird's eye view. Everybody, every county party between January 1st and February 13th has to pick, elect one person to go on the board of elections. Every board of elections in the state has two Democrats, two Republicans, and they have to be chosen between January 1st and February 13th on even on odd numbered years, on off election years. So one of our two people is chosen tomorrow. We'll vote on somebody to be on the board, and then we submit that name to Secretary of State, and they, for most part, approve most of them. Sometimes they don't approve them, but so that's what we're doing tomorrow. We have to appoint some new people. I um, think we're going to discuss about school board and stuff. Um, we're not going to endorse tomorrow because we're going to wait and see who makes the ballot. But, um, you know, we have to talk about things, get ready for this year's election because the mayor and city council up this year. Hmm. There's always an election. There's always somebody running There's for office. There's always something going right. on. So, All right. I don't know how you're going to answer this question because I remember, and now that you're in a position, I don't want to say power. That's too strong of a word. Hmm. Influence. Is okay. That a, is that a fair word? I don't know. I don't think I influence anybody, but okay. Okay. Because the politics, I do. The Senate, I don't. There's a difference. All right. Okay. I remember years ago, I asked you specifically, and you helped me out because you knew somebody who could help me. I needed to fast forward a passport to go to Greece because my father died. And you were just Billy DeMora who ran campaigns and so forth and so on, but you knew somebody who could expedite a passport for me so I could get to Greece to bury my father. I appreciated that. That's so, not going to change. To, to, but, but, but my question is, uh, favors. Even though you've only been in the job for a short amount of time, do you see and have noticed people like now Locking in, saying, Billy, hey, can I talk to you for a second? I need dot, dot, dot. Well, but it's different now. I mean, for instance, the budget just got introduced last week. The state of the state was last Tuesday. And everybody now, all the lobbyists, everybody who gets money from the state of Ohio is coming in to talk to all legislators about, hey, I want my piece of the budget. And that's just part of the job. Um, I mean, every, every lobbyist brings all their clients in. That's what all these meetings are for every half hour is, Somebody bring their client in and talk about the, what they want out of state government, whether it's a budget, whether it's on one of the seven committees. I'm on seven committees. You're on seven committees. There's only seven of us. So literally, oh, I'm the only, yeah, I'm you got to be on. Right. I'm only Democrat on three committees. I'm on four. I'm on utilities, transportation, insurance, JCAR, which is Joint Committee on Agency Rule Review, local government elections, general government, and sunset review. What's sunset review? Uh, any old laws. You go over them to see if they need to be changed or ant- or the antiquated. Oh, there, there's there's, some, there's a ton of antiquated yes laws on the books. You can't like, yeah. cross the street on a yeah. Monday yeah, or yeah, a half. So yeah. if you know of them, of those bring them to my attention because my job is to look those over and potentially get rid of them. Yes. So you can't tie your horse to a hitching post on a Sunday or something like that. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's something we need to get out of this, the revised code and get rid of that. Yes. No sheep down Main Street. Yeah, something like that. I yes. Want my sheep <laughs> down Main Street. Well. <laughs> Chip has a lot of sheep. That's uh, right. Well, I know that's, probably that's what a, he does with his that's sheep, That's a selfish too. request. Oh, shit. Sheep does he have a sheep every day of the week? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> so, <laughs> you said you're on seven committees? Seven. Seven. So, that's uh, at least five more than George Santos. <laughs> <laughs> well, seven more because he's not on. He took himself off of them. <laughs> did you see Santos? Did you see Mitt yeah, Romney lay into Santos yeah, yesterday? I, I oh, did. my God. Oh, he said, you shouldn't be here. He goes, Santos was literally standing in the door 
trying to greet everybody as they walked in. And <laughs> That's right. Romney went after him saying, you shouldn't be here. You should be in the corner sitting away from somebody because you're an embarrassment. And you shouldn't be in the Congress. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then if you saw Biden, Sanders was trying to take Biden's hand and Biden just walked right by him. <laughs> <laughs> the last thing Joe Biden needs is a handshake with fucking idiot George Santos who, who doesn't know what the truth yeah. is because he's a lie. And this Santos was like in the hallway like, that's not very Mormon of him. Yeah. And I was right. like, what the oh. fuck, you fuckhead? You're talking about a guy. <laughs> I mean, you got... You got Dingbat merging to the green. This fucking Santos guy who doesn't, who lies about, I mean, why would you lie you play college volleyball, for God's sake? I know, it's what, ridiculous. I mean, the guy lies about shit. And that's what and Romney called Why would Romney you lie said, about that sport? Romney said, he said, <laughs> embellishing is mean you got it. You, when you tell people you got an A, when you got an A minus. You're just an out, out liar because you haven't, you, you don't tell people you went to a college you didn't go to. That's lying. He's a psychopath. I, I just dude. want you guys, I just want you guys to watch. This is what I did just like yeah. uh, 90 seconds ago. Yeah. yeah. I lit a match. There you go. <laughs> and Santos you, <laughs> probably would say, "Oh, I lit the. I, I'm the one, the person that put the flame on the fucking top of the living torch one time." He probably. I'm surprised oh he God. hasn't said that yet. He's like, "What's his name?" Santa Live. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I invented the match. <laughs> John Lovitz. I invented the match. Yeah, right. of fact. Uh, a little bit, yeah. Love it. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I mean, but and there's a method to my madness. I I purposely brought that up because. <laughs> there's those types of people in the next four years that you're going to come across and deal with on a regular basis. And Listen, if it's something I believe in, I, I'm so I've had people already tell me this, that you, I am. I'm just bluntly honest. I don't pull strings. If I'm, if I tell somebody that I, for instance, yesterday, Coda came in to my office. It was, it was, it was, Public transit day at the state house. So they had all the public transit people from all around the state come in and meet with their legislators. So Coda came to my office, um, and I said, "You don't have to lobby me." I said, "I'm all for rail. I'm all for more public transit." Uh, I said, "We need to get more." Fe- I mean, the federal government's trying to give us money, and the state doesn't want to take it because these Republicans don't believe in public transit. They want to have more fucking cars, and um, I'm all for transit. I said, "So listen." You don't have to lobby me. I will try to get as much money. I'm all for as much money for Coda and transit and stuff in Franklin County as we can possibly get. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. All so, right. You're good. So, and that was an easy one. Now, somebody came to my office um, <clears throat> about another subject. Um, it had to do with, uh, what the hell was it? Um, I forget what, I forget the topic. And I said, well, I'm not so sure I'm for that. I said, I said, he said, well, I said, where are the teachers on this? Because both my parents are teachers, obviously, and I'm, I, you know, I'm into teachers and teachers unions, but we haven't talked to them yet. I said, well, you better talk to the teachers because I'm not signing on anything unless I know where the teachers are. Because I'm, if the, if the OEA is against this stuff, then I'm not for it. I'm just bluntly honest because that's no, that, that's great. I, so I, 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 I so they know where I, I am. They know where I stand because I don't, I don't care if they know whether I'm for or against something because I'm not changing. I mean, I'm bluntly honest. If the teachers union, if yeah. the OEA is against something, I'm not for it. Yeah, you got to be with the union, right? Well, I mean, both my parents were lifetime OEA members. My girlfriend is HR director for OEA. Uh, I got endorsed by OEA, um, you know, and I'm not going to fuck OEA. Yeah. I mean, when both my parents put me to college because they were public school teachers. Yeah. So um, so stuff like that, I just told the guy, listen, I'm not going to do anything until, I know, until you tell me where the OEA is or, or AFT. I, I mean, how far rights teachers, OFT. Because if the unions are against us, I'm not for it. It's that simple. Okay, so let me ask you this. Uh, just just based on this conversation we've had all night long and I've been listening and so forth and so on, as you continue on in this position, are you going to be considered by some to be a rabble rouser? Yes. Or, yes, that w- that, that that's half of it. Or the flip side of it, somebody positive and that can make change. Well, I mean, I was... I understand. You said the odds are against you. There's seven of you. Right. As opposed to however many you said earlier. So but. actually, my first bill that I'm, I'm working on is is for students in ROTC to be able to use their credits to go to grad school instead of having them all end at the end of undergrad. And if they do that, they have to spend three more years military service and all that sort of stuff. The Ohio State ROTC people asked me to do it. I said, <clears> of course. Um it's an easy bill. I got went and asked a Republican co-sponsor who is a Navy veteran who signed on. This bill has six Republicans already signed on as co-sponsors. So 
I mean, as the Senate Minority Leader said, Bill, I, I can't believe your first bill might actually pass because it's something non-controversial. And yeah. I went across the aisle to get a sponsor because it's something that's good policy. And I work with anybody if it's going to be good policy. And there are some Republicans that really cared about helping people. I, I mentioned Stephanie Cousy, Cousy again. <laughs> there, are, there are Republicans uh, no, that no, care. No, 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 no. But, but you know what? You, you laugh, but that needs to happen. Right, yes, it right, does. Right? And, yeah. and, and, and that needs to happen. Yes, and as long as it's helping the citizens of Ohio, I'm going to help. I don't care if it's Democrat or Republican. It's when these Republicans get in these culture wars that, you know, they want to dismantle the State Board of Education because Democrats actually won elections on it, so they control it now. But let's get rid of it and give everything to Governor DeWine, who wants to expand fucking vouchers and give more money to vouchers and all this shit. And all it does is take money away from public schools, which hurts the public schools, which we haven't fully funded in... How many years ago, Bill Madison, did you work on that case down in Perry County? That would be 33 years ago. Thir- 33 right. years ago. So we haven't funded public schools adequately since 33 years, but they want to take this money and give it to fucking charter schools. My, my son right. went to Columbus Alternative. That's a public school. And it's, that building's a piece of shit. That's a building. That's not, that's not, I'm just saying. That's a different pot of money. That, you know. That's a different pot of money. It's nothing to do with per pupil spending uh, for the school district. That's a building. But you know what I mean. Okay. Yeah, completely different issue. Yes. But you can't, you can't build a building out of the money they give you per pupil. You have to build money out of building fund money. No, I'm just saying. So, All yes, right. a lot of public schools, I mean, Columbus public schools are trying to rebuild as many of these buildings as they can. But Columbus schools are losing out on this money because other people are going to charter schools. And yep. the Columbus schools are mismanaged. Our Columbus school board, let's be honest, the four current members up for election in the Columbus school board, um, I'm not sure the party's going to endorse a goddamn one of them. We're going to throw them all out. They fucked the teachers last year, and so, you know, fuck them all. So I'm not sure. I think we're going to have a, a, a lot of brand new school board. Although only six people filed, one of them's a Republican, so we're not going to buy that group. So at least one incumbent will be win because the four people get elected. But, um, uh, but there are going to be three new school board members this year because fuck the rest of them. All right, I'm gonna. But we, we divulge. I'm sorry. No, no, no. It's okay. No, 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 I'm no, sorry. No, it was my fault. No, I no, no, brought no, no, a building. No, no, no. Let, let's <laughs> let let's 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 put a lid on that for just a second. Um, this is pretty good too. I haven't had it. Yeah, that's good. Well, this is one that yeah. Johnny what is this word? Is poured out of nowhere. This, this is a hotel. <laughs> this this changed well, a little hotel bit. Hotel Tango. A little breathe breather here. And this is a Hotel Tango, which is only uh. Yeah, it, it, made by Window West, but it's bottled in Indiana. It's good. The it's the most. Um, when you go to a hotel this is a bourbon. Yes. There's a single barrel. There's a bur- there's a regular bourbon, and there's a rye. I, I've seen this on the shelf. I think I really, you, I they recognize they this I have label. Seen it too. Uh, well, I, I've seen the Tango yeah. on, on the shelf. Maybe I, have, I haven't seen. I, it I here, don't know if I've seen this particular one. I saw the Wyland's. I believe this is a more the most uh, everyday whiskey of all the ones that we've tried so much so, so far. So far, yeah. You know what I mean? It's good. Like, down the road, down the middle. It's good. also young. It's not old. Yep. And I, yeah. Like well, I, I you know, here's, the, here's the deal with young know. whiskey. If young whiskey is Anything made well, it's okay. Yeah. You know, it doesn't have to be old to be good. Well, the older sometimes the better. Uh, no, I understand that. Mm-hmm. You know, with age comes wisdom, and also with wisdom comes better bourbon and right. rye. But like the six year rye is awesome. Yeah. But 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 if people do their work with a young whiskey yeah the you know um Middle our West friends at echo job, yeah. make young they're they're you know they make young whiskey yeah, yeah. We need to get those guys their whiskey. i am i like their rye a lot i yeah. like their rye i like their rye a lot we got to connect with those guys because they we owe them something now yeah. echo makes yeah. some good stuff that it had before no which is the one on fifth avenue <laughs> uh, high bank no, no fifth no. right across Fifth Middle and, West. Middle West. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Echo. I have not had anything from Echo I like yet. I'm sorry. Middle West makes a lot of some good shit. Yeah, they do actually. Yeah. Senator. Alone, <laughs> Senator. <laughs> That's the only time I want to bring up Senator. Senator, I disagree with you. That's fine. A lot of people do. Echo. Echo makes a, a great rye, and I, I love what they're doing. Maybe you haven't any recently, but I didn't like. Uh, it okay. Well, you need to. Okay. I'm always going to try. Um, you're open. That's good. I'm open for bourbon. I'm not open to my political philosophies. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, just just based on this this conversation and your passion and your commitment and your truth, it, you realize that in the next four years you're gonna 
come across some lovers and some haters. Oh, this was wait. I I plan on pissing everybody else off in the Senate, whether they're Democrats or Republicans, at one point or time or another. My Democratic colleagues, they're all nice people. None of them are really political. And they sometimes do things to go along and get along. And if they do that while I'm there, I'm going to call them all out on it. Because we're there to be fucking Democrats. And if the Republicans do shit stuff, our job is not to go along to get along. It's to call them out and be the bully pulpit to call out the bullshit they're doing to ruin the state of Ohio. Now, the Republicans are going to be pissed off at me because I'm... You know, I'm going to go on the floor when they have this bullshit stuff and say, mm-hmm. this is bullshit. You guys are doing this stuff. You know, I will call them all horse, horses' asses. I don't give a shit. I mean, there's Oprah right now. There's a pool in the Senate. Over under, how many sessions it takes for Bill DeMore to use fuck on the floor? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to use it. Uh, and then I'm going to have On the floor? Of course I am. You are. Oh, of course. You're going to use that word. You're going to use the F word. Yes. On the floor. You're going to well, drop the F bomb. And then I'm going to have a fundraiser put money into Bill DeMore's swear jar. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> Do they find you for that stuff? No, no, they don't. Okay. I mean, it'll come out like, who, what the fuck are we doing? Oh, I'm sorry. I used the word fuck. I'll do something else now. You that's, should actually have a swear jar and just pass it around. No, he's uh, cool. you, you think he made that up? He's serious. <laughs> I'm serious. Uh, he's yeah. totally serious. All right. I want to go to these. Uh, well, I mean, so. Do you ever see yourself? Do you ever see yourself? A fan section? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Fan. Well, you know what? Yeah, but he'll have fans. He'll have fans. Do you ever see yourself? In a, in a filibuster situation, we can't do that. It doesn't exist. No, no, like exist. There's, there's no Mr. Like, Smith goes to Washington. There's no, oh, no. Oh, How God. disappointing for all of us. Listen, if we had it, I would do it. Yeah. I know you would, <laughs> but we can't do it. I mean, the Senate President can gavel me down, and then I'm done. He turned my mic off, and I'm over. All right. Have we tried almost everything? We have not tried the fresh. We've not, that's what you started with. You started talking about the fresh. And I did, got and then no one else drank it, so I, I, I pivoted. No, no, no. Well, let's get to the fresh, and then I have one more question for you, and then we're going to start wrapping things okay. up. All right, so let's try the fresh. Again, this is, it says Three. Bottle in Paris, Kentucky, but the store is in downtown Lexington. It's a very, it's one of the newer, Just I have not been there. Shane and Sarah brought me this when they went down um, to Keelan in October. Uh, I've only had it the one thing here, so I haven't... Well, my first question is, is it... It's is it called fresh? fresh for a reason. Is this a rye? No, it's a bourbon. It smells like a rye. It smells like tea. Mmm, it's got a, it's got a very different nose mm. out of all the ones we've had tonight. It has a, uh, like a prom couple or a married couple. There the says bottom. something about a honey wheat in it. Honey suckle. Honey suckle. Honey, honey something, honey something, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. I can smell it because it's kind of a greeny, kind of leafy yeah. with a little bit, yeah. Yeah, like tea was my first instinct. Yeah. With all the things that are wrong with you right now, medically speaking, with your nose is awesome. Oh. <laughs> you know, are, you, are you okay? What's wrong with you medically? It's gonna be the last. I have nah, blood long, pressure. So it's another oh, I'm podcast. Sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I'm working on it. It's it's actually better. But your friend. nose, you know, has you, been, your nose has remained unaffected. That's you know true. how you get rid of high blood pressure? You scream at people. Oh shit! I do that all the time. I mean, do you have high blood pressure? No, never. I I, I every time. I have had my physical. How do you not have my blood pressure? Because I don't keep anything in. If I get pissed off, I scream at people. I scream at Ohio State football games. I yell. I get it all out. I have, I've never had high blood pressure. My blood pressure has always been a low side of normal every time I'm physical. My physical is next Tuesday again. But for the first time, I haven't started my two-week cleanse. I know. Oh, I know. Yeah. The problem is this job, I mean, I barely, now. You eat a lot, don't you? No, I don't eat a lot. I don't. No, but you get you go to a lot of lunches. You get a lot of dinners. You're gonna eat a lot. You're gonna no, get fat. I don't. You're gonna get fat. I don't go to dinner. <laughs> you're gonna get fat. You're, you're not on you're the chicken and pea circuit. What? You're not on the chicken pea circuit. No. It's not, it's not the are, chicken are you worried about getting fat? No. <laughs> you're gonna I get mean, fat. So today I had lunch. You're fatter now than I last time I saw you. It was it was the first time I had food in like a day and a half. Do you hear what I said? Do you hear what I said? I'm taking that home with me. Yes. And nothing else has breakfast tomorrow, for God's sake. Absolutely. Said. absolutely. Yeah, I, no, I didn't. I, I said you're fatter than the last time I saw you. I'm sure I am. <laughs> <laughs> I <don't think> so. <laughs> Whatever. You're looking good, Billy. You're looking good. Yeah. He's in that suit. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> I need to lose 15 pounds. I understand that. I've had to lose 15 pounds since COVID. When, the, you know, the first month of COVID, my girlfriend and I drank 28 bottles of wine in 30 days. Yeah. And that didn't count the 10 bottles of bourbon that went through that same 30-day period, too. So... I mean, I have never got rid of that weight. It's happy fat. I don't know if COVID was happy or not. 
No, no, no. But but you did happy things while you were in the middle of COVID, so it's happy fact. Yeah, whatever. And you did it with your girlfriend. What did your girlfriend say about all this? About what? Running for Senate. No, she... Uh, I mean, my girlfriend uh, is great. I mean, she really is great. She's down to earth. She's very level. Um, I mean, I said, we dated oh, like 15, 20 years, 15, 16 years ago before she got different. married. It's different. Um, it's busy. So she knew me. We were young Democrats, young Democrats together. Um, so in one sense, she's a little disappointed because we were supposed to go to Italy. We were supposed to go to Italy for two weeks in May. And your neighbors are going to come with us. There was a group of Italian club guys going. Right, 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 right. And I can't go because the Senate has a budget in May. It has to be passed. Oh, shit. So you got to be there. I, had, I could go to Italy. I had to cancel my trip to Italy. Which, well, she can still go, right? She's not going by herself. She's not going to go by herself. She's not going to go without the Billy. <laughs> um, so I'm not going to Italy for two weeks. And I, I'm disappointed. Trust me. She's disappointed. I'm disappointed because I was looking forward. I'm in Italy. You know, in several years, and then my dad passed, so I haven't been back to Italy since that happened. So I wanted to go back, but I can't because I have to be at work. I can't blow off two weeks of session with the budget to go to Italy. Um, so that's disappointing. So we went to New Orleans two weeks ago for a weekend. Um, had a great weekend in New Orleans. I got sick. I was sick every night because it all has dairy in it. Um, I tried to take pills, but they don't work. So um, I ate great, and then I was sick for several hours afterwards. Every night. So if somebody wanted to take Senator Demore out, all I had to do is slip you some dairy. I'm not going to take me out, but it'll make oh. me feel uncomfortable for several hours. Oh, quick. my God. Yeah. I bet. Um, when you were in New Orleans, how many Joe Burrow uh, jerseys did you see? Um, Off this subject. Just yeah, I, Completely. I, I, I wasn't, <laughs> Completely. I, mean, I wasn't paying attention to it. You Come on. So I actually, <laughs> my, one of my cousins actually gives tours on the quarter on, on Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday from one to four of their food tours. And from five to eight, the cocktail tours. So we took both of them and all kind of food to eat, all kind of cocktails afterward. It was, it was nice. So if you go to New Orleans, I'll give it my cousin and she'll take you on tours. Okay. Nice. But, I mean, it affects her because, listen, normally we'd spend a lot of nights together. I mean, she would come over and we'd hang out. We, I'd cook her dinner all the time. We'd go to something. But now I have fucking events all every every Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. So I... It changes her. her life too. Mm. Yeah, it changes her life. She's it changes her life. She can spend less less time with me, which probably she's happy about, <laughs> um, <laughs> and more time with her dogs because her dogs miss her when she's not home. Um, <laughs> but um, it's different. I mean, it's different now. She'll. Um, she was at my swearing in. So you want to hear the story? So Bill yeah, wanted to hear the story. So the night I love a story. The night before the I got sworn in. So. On Monday, January 2nd, my cousin and her son, my, my cousin on my father's side, so Italian cousin, um, came down, and we went to dinner at Martini, um, and she gave me this present, and it was a Bible. And it had a house logo on it, and my picture, my, my parents' wedding picture on it, and some of the picture on the back. And me, 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 I said, well, what are you giving me a Bible for? I'm not going to ever use it. I don't believe in it. I'm not going to use it. And... So what are you going to be sworn in on? I said, I'm going to be sworn on anything. I'm not, I'm just, I said, there's no laws that be sworn on the Bible. I said, I'm not going to be a hypocrite and get sworn on something I don't believe in. So the Bible's in a box and it'll be in a box, the same box that came in. And it'll be there forever because I'm not going to open it. But I felt bad. My cousin, so he actually called my brother. I said, why my brother think, just because he's really, somehow I'm going to open the Bible up. Just because as my parents picture it, it has Ohio State's logo on it. And there are some things that I'm not, Ohio State can't transform. And that's one of them. <laughs> so, um, but that was a story. So, we got to the swearing in, and I felt bad for Bill and Karen and some of the friends. I only got eight tickets. I was only allowed eight tickets to go because everybody got, I mean, everybody's getting sworn in. I got eight tickets. So I had to, I, I chose. It's tough. It is tough. I chose four of the guys I've been buddies with since college, and I chose my cousin and her son, and I chose um, my business partner, Ron Malone, and his wife. Those are my eight people. Um, and I felt bad because I love that Bill and Karen there. I love that Sarah and Shane there or Johnny. But I got eight tickets. Nothing I do about it. I want extra tickets. No one gave me extra They know. They know better. I know. So they know. Um, so Senator, I mean, so the Democrats were all sworn in by Justice Stewart, a Democrat on the Supreme Court. As you know, Justice, well, you went there, but Justice Donnelly, another Supreme Court justice. And I swore, apologize for not being no, there. I mean, I, you no, know, I know. You, I know, you I know, had a lot going on that day. So I had, he swore me in at the Italian club, my official swearing in, and then Justice Stewart swore in all the Democrats at the State House that day. So 
she knew ahead of time that I would not be sworn in the Bible, but she had one in her hand, and she couldn't hold the piece of paper to read the oath to me and the Bible. So she gave the Bible to my girlfriend. And my girlfriend said, well, shit, I should have just carried your, own, your cousin's Bible because I had to carry a Bible. I could have carried that one instead of this one. So it was kind of funny. <laughs> but I, I just, I, I, I swore, and I didn't take my, I, I took my oath, and, but I didn't swear on a Bible because I'm just not a hypocrite. What did you swear I, on? Nothing. You don't have to swear Pokemon on cards, uh, what? Got sworn I, in. I swore on Marjorie Taylor Green being a bitch. I don't know, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Who's the guy who got sworn in on like a Superman comic? That's what I'm saying. Yeah, recently right. did. I don't remember. But no, I, I'm not, I'm not going to, I wasn't going to make light of it, but I wasn't going to no, it's not, something no, that's not no, me. No, no, but it is who you are. And, and that's one of the things that I respect. I mean, there's, there's no pretense. There's, you're not trying to be somebody who you're not. You are who you are. And I respect that. I respect that in a big way. Um, my last question for you as we wrap things up tonight. And by the way, the fresh. Uh, it's busy. Uh, yeah, it's, I don't know about the fresh. I don't know about the fresh. It's, it's a little too fresh. A it's a little. It's a little. It's it, it's, it's not probably, inviting. It's probably my least favorite out of the bunch. I agree 100. percent Yes. It, it's got. That's a why I had a first sip of it. No one else drank it, and I stopped drinking it. It's got a QR code on the side of it. I'm. I, I, you don't trust that shit. No, I don't it trust does? it. Yeah, if it's well, got a QR wonderful. code on the side, then I don't. Why don't you do the QR code? See what the hell happens. Tastes a lot like pee. Oh, and by the way, should I report that uh, his underwear let me down this year when we lost the team up north? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It let me down. Sorry. Oh, it can't. It came. You wore them. Oh, I wore them. I've worn them for two seasons. What are you oh, talking shit, about? Shit, that's right. It won't let you down. It's not read, it's not read here. Time for something new. Yes. So I, I have to. I have new shoes for next. No, same shoes. I have new socks. <laughs> I have a new hat for next year. I'm gonna. I, I have to get new underwear. Got um, a new license plate. Got a new license plate. That doesn't count. <laughs> but the, the tailgate car still has WPD OSU on it. That doesn't change. Are you still gonna do your tailgates? Of course. For the even first with th- your busy, even with your busy schedule. Oh, Ohio State football is preeminent. Okay, so mind. when that happens, when football season runs around, comes around again, <laughs> and you've got senator stuff to yeah, do. There right? is no senator and, stuff and, during and, a home what football. What if they Saturday. push a vote to Saturday, dude? Uh, I don't fucking show up. Oh. I don't you won't that. go to Italy. I don't believe that for a second. <laughs> if you think I'm going to miss the Ohio State home football game to vote for the Senate, you're sorely mistaken. <laughs> Not going to happen. No, I mean, you know what? That'll probably get you more votes if you decide true, to run again. Actually. Well, <laughs> my, here's, my, here's my question. Here's my question. Seriously, in, in all sincerity. Um, you got four years ahead of you, and you just – barely into your first year barely and obviously from what you've told me you sound extremely busy and 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 uh i know you i know your commitment i know you're gonna follow through on everything but you personally now that you have the gig the job a senator uh oh actually i have two questions let me ask you the first one i thought you only had one question no i had two two questions (laughs) two questions two questions I'm here all night. And, uh, <laughs> no, 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 two, two questions. One's, one's a personal and one's a professional. The first one is a personal one. Um, your father, one of the most amazing men I've met in my adult life. Um, how do you think he would feel about you being a senator right now? Uh, so you want me to break down, right? Is that what you're trying to do? No, so listen, I, um, I got into politics with my father. I mean, he was a councilman. I walked my first precinct at age four for him. Um, I'm sorry that he wasn't alive to see me win. I really am. And I'm going to start breaking down, so I'm sorry. Um, he'd be proud of me because, I mean, he was elected official for 20 years as a councilman. And I wouldn't be in politics and he had started me and encouraged me to something I loved to do. So I'm sure he's proud of me. I wish he'd been there to swear me in. Um, but he wasn't. So uh, I'm sorry. Your father lived to be how old? 99. 99 oh, years God. old. Don't, no, it's okay, man. It's okay. That's a hell of a It's one. okay. That's awesome. It's okay. It's okay. That's I, the one question I don't like people asking because I always have the same response. I'm sorry. No, it's a good response. Dude. You're going to make me cry. You're going to make me because I love your dad. I have his hat downstairs in the poker room. Do you? Yeah, still. Okay. Yeah, he gave me his hat. I know. I remember. Yeah, it's still hanging in the poker room downstairs. Your father was an amazing man. Uh, he gave one of the best scholarship speeches Ever off the cuff, Did write anything down? off the cuff at the at the Columbus Italian Club, your father was uh, your father was a blessing, and and uh, and I didn't mean to make you cry, but I, I you know I'm very parents 
mean a lot to me. Uh, you helped me go to my father's funeral in Greece. Mm-hmm. My mother, God bless her, is still alive, and and, uh, and so so yeah, it, it oh, means yeah. a lot. And I know that he was. I, you know that he had a big ass smile on his face mm-hmm. up in heaven uh, when when this happened. If that's where he ended up, you never know. You know, no, I know I'm, he ended I'm up. I'm in kidding. Heaven. I got to do something to get myself. You, I'm uh, not so sure about, my, but your I, father. I, I, yeah, I understand that. Yes. Okay. <laughs> My mother was actually the saint of the family. Yeah, so, your yeah. mother, your mother. I wish I would have met your mother, but your father, I consider to be a blessing. Question: That was question one. Question two: As you move on in the next four years, and I've had a time to think about, you call yourself the accidental senator. Yeah. Okay. Let's put the accidental aside for a second. Okay. Now let's talk about the purposeful senator. What do you personally want to do in the next four years? What would you like to accomplish? What would you like to see happen? I mean, I'd like to do something, I mean, to help people. I mean, one of the, I mean, a couple of issues I'm involved in is one of them is elder care. Um, mm-hmm. Because my father had he lived to be 100, had he lived to about now or maybe next month, would have been out of money. All the money I had to spend on people coming to his house to watch him 24 hours a day, seven days a week when I wasn't there. Um, and the price of elder care and the, and when I mean people didn't show up all the time. I mean Bill and Bill will tell you. I mean, I was, I mean the the person didn't show up that's supposed to take care of him. I had to stop everything and drive to Cleveland, and make sure I was home. And so it is a strain. Everybody, in Ohio was talking about job creation and all these jobs and all these new things coming in. But if we don't solve the elder care and the child care problems, you're not going to have enough people to work all these jobs because people are going to take care of their kids. I mean a lot of people this, of two parent families. One of the parents doesn't work. They say, don't take care of the kids because it's cheaper for them to stay home than it is to pay somebody to watch them. And the people that watch them, there aren't enough of them. Some of them aren't trustworthy. So they stay home. They're not in the labor force because they're taking care of kids. And the same thing goes with parents. I mean, it's a, it's a huge problem um, that we need to address because, I mean, you're not going to go to work when your parent's sitting home. You're not going to leave your parent home by himself if you can't find somebody to take care of them. So, um, it's a huge issue, and if we're going to move forward in the state with all the jobs that we're creating, with all these people that are coming in, Intel, the new Honda plant, all these mm-hmm. things coming in, we have to find a way to solve child care and elder care, make it make it more affordable to get more people involved in doing it because there's not enough people doing it, either one of them right now, and it's a huge issue for when it comes to job creation. So I, I'm going to work with anybody who wants to work with me on those issues because it's personal to me. Obviously, not the child care because I've got a child, but the right. elder care is. I mean, I saw how expensive it was. I saw, you know, people that you pay some firm to do that and they decide not to show up for a weekend. And I, you have to stop everything and boom, you have to go home. And I was lucky at the end to have, uh, to have some people that were there and always were trustworthy and never missed out. But before that, I had people that, decided they're not coming today. They don't show up. They don't tell me why they're not showing up. And the that person that's there ahead of time says, there's no one here. I have to leave to go take care of my kids or whatever. And I have to beg somebody to go watch them till I can get to Cleveland. So it was, it was, it was, it was stressful. I mean, worry about who's taking care of your parent is huge stress. And it costs, I mean, he, it cost him nearly every cent he had to keep him at home. And I was going to keep him at home because he felt better at home. He was, and I think he lived longer because he was at home. Yeah, I agree. I so agree. those are huge issues that I'm hoping to work on. If we can do something to solve those issues, it's gonna be it's gonna help the whole entire state. It's gonna help everybody because at one point in time, everybody's got everybody has parents. I mean, you can't be born without parents somewhere or somehow, whether they're adopted or not. You have parents, and if we don't solve the child care and health and elder care issues, then our state's not gonna be able to move forward. So I'm hoping to work on those issues. Um, from a Democrat perspective, I mean, listen, I like to reverse half the stuff the Republicans have done over the last 10 years. I mean, it's not going to happen, but, I mean, you know, I'm going to raise hell. But you got to keep a good thought. I keep a good thought, right. I'm going to raise hell. Maybe sometime in my lifetime, probably not while well, I'm ever eligible to run for office again, we'll maybe have Democrats in charge in Ohio. Who the hell knows? I'm hoping it comes one day or not, but but still I'm going to make, I'm going to be a bully pulpit to show people that things can go better and some of the shit they're passing is Horrible for people. So, I want to. I want to. I want to. Also, from a personal standpoint, political, as I've told the Senate leader, 
a Democratic leader, I said, if nothing else, I want more senators here when I leave than when I started. There's seven of us now. So when I leave in four years or eight years, if there's eight or nine or ten, I've done my job because I'm not going to let these people screw around and fuck it up and have and lose more seats. Yeah. There you go. There you go. Billy DeMore, right. everybody. Four more years. Four more years. <laughs> And I lied. There's a third question. Okay. Oh, shit. There's a third question. Right. <laughs> Will you come back at the start of the Ohio State football season? Oh, I better season? come back. God damn it. <laughs> Has the world's most superstitious yes. luck Oh, man. absolutely. I'm looking at <laughs> Listen, we, got a, we, got a, we had a question to quarterback, but the rest of the offense, we need 12 inch of linemen. We need a quarterback, but the rest of the offense, all the receivers are back, all the, the tight end is back, all the running backs are back. Our offense is going to score another 40 points a game. The defense, keeping two linebackers was key. Our defensive line is going to be studs again. Tulamalu, Sawyer back. Um, uh, Hall is back. Our <laughs> defensive line is going to be solid. They Two linebackers stacked. back. We just got a transfer a st- quarterback from in from Mississippi who's a stud as a freshman. Who is that one? A- <laughs> I can't pronounce his name. But it's, a, it's a funky name. Billy. A simple yes with a suffice. Okay, yes. <laughs> uh, yes. 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 <laughs> yes. My friend. And also said, don't finish it all. Put something back in there. I got, I got, you I got, got a little that. bit left. In all sincerity, congratulations. Thank you. I think that the state of Ohio is better for you being in it as a senator. Thank you for doing this podcast tonight. Thank you for being blatantly honest and sincere as you always are. I think, I hope, to God anyway, because politics is such a fickle, crazy crazy business that you decided to pour yourself into but i hope that your voice remains strong and has an effect and and does something very positive not only for the state of ohio but hopefully it's something that resonates also throughout the political world well let's hope let's, let's hope yeah. right yeah. god bless you man. Uh, all right cheers, 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 my cheers, arm was really cheers. tired for that one yeah yeah it was <laughs> an irish uh, i think dino had to run for office he's long-winded like right. most politicians <laughs> Okay, so people, we got to wrap up. Yeah, you want the business? Yeah, we Keep, got do business. the business. Whiskey do business, business is the podcast about whiskey, not so much. No, it's with, a podcast with whiskey. With whiskey, not so much about whiskey. Yeah. Whiskey business is the podcast. <clears throat> not so much about whiskey, whiskey as it is one with whiskey. whiskey. We got it's only it. been five years. Is that new? That's not new. <laughs> Thank you for, for subscribing on your favorite podcasting app. Um, make sure you, uh, you smash that subscribe button. Merge. Should I get Chip to do this? He might, he might have to. <laughs> we need to get him a script or something. Write, oh, review, uh, yeah. and rate and review us. Uh, that would be helpful. Uh, it helps with our numbers and everything. It's true. Post your comments. Instagram, Facebook, uh, don't put your Twitter. Don't quit. <laughs> this is my day he job. He might get fired from his day job. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, YouTube Whiskey Business with Dina Tripodis. Smash that subscribe button. Smash it. <laughs> Hit that uh, bell. Bing, bing, bing. <laughs> Almost we well done. Well, Almost well we done. Have, we have to thank our uh, our parent company, Evergreen uh, Podcast uh, Network in Cleveland, Ohio. Thank you so much. Gatos for bringing that. Gatos. Jeff Gage for being the sponsor of the guest bottle. Uh, and, and, and again, I will thank you, man, again, for, for coming. You know, I, I know we're friends, but I, I don't know if I'd be able to get anybody at your level right now to come in here and be as frank and honest as you were. And uh, I hope that carries you. don't want to be frank and honest because they're worried about their futures. I don't, you know, I'm just honest because that's who I am. Yep. But I think it's going to carry you a long way, man. Yeah. I really do. Four more years. I really do. And, uh. I get through the first four, one, one, four, yeah, more. Yeah, let's just start chanting that in about. Three oh no, and a half I think you. I think. I mean, <laughs> aside from being back as the crazy superstitious Buckeye fan, I think we're gonna have to revisit you as you get into a couple years in this job, and, and I, I'm very curious about where things are gonna go and where you're gonna be. So we might revisit this. Is that okay? Yeah. Absolutely. And yes. The, the limo and your security will pull up. Yeah, my my press secretary sitting in the back drinking. Yes. That's right. Yeah. I thought it was your body man. The there house. was a there was a no no. You know what? It, it, it was it was tongue in cheek earlier this evening. But I got a, I got a phone call like, oh, uh, do you have a list of questions prepared for Senator Demore that we need to approve? And I go, the list isn't finalized yet. But I'm wondering in two years if that might be the case. No, it will not be. <laughs> yeah, trust me, it will not be. 
I, yeah. I'll answer anything. I don't care because I'm just answering honestly. I don't give a shit what anybody asks me. I never care. All right, excellent. That's what we need. More <laughs> That's right. More candor. Yeah. All right. Well, all right. Um, I want to thank Greg Hansberry, audio side, John Whitney on the video side, Chip Cassell on all sides. Woo! Chip, yeah, back you. there. And our guest, Senator William. Oh, I forgot to ask. What's the P stand for? It's Paul. I, I, you know, I have two Paul? Oh, Paul? I have Paul? two middle names. Really? So Paul? You were not there. Bill and Karen were. But when I Paul? Got, when I got sworn in. My, like in St. Paul, at least. My legal name is William Paul Lardamita Demora. <laughs> what? My, my legal name is William Paul Lardamita Demora. Lardamita? That's my dad's what? real last name. Lardamita. Long Lard- oh, Lardamita. Oh, Lardamita and, and Mira turned into Mora? No, Lardamita. Demora became something when people in the family did something that you couldn't run for office on. <laughs> oh, shit. That's another podcast. That's another podcast. Yeah, that's yes. another podcast. Yes. Yes. All right. So, to our guest, Senator William P. Paul. Paul. I could never call you Paul. No, I don't know. It's just it's Bill. Paul? <laughs> Thank you, buddy. Thank you. Absolutely. My name is Dina Tripotis. This is Whiskey Business. Until the next bottle or bottles, see ya. Woo-hoo. Woo-hoo.